Hello everyone, and welcome to Fictional Vortex, so we are back with an interesting series on what if Naruto had the sage's inheritance become overpowered. But before we start, I just want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you enjoy my content. Let's start the story. Why me the worst ever? Naruto Uzumaki, the dobi of the academy and bane of every ninja around, is walking or more like stomping around the forest diving wave country where his ninja team left on a mission, and fire country, where Naruto's village lies and supposedly, hidden. As for why the blonde ninja that wears all orange in such a bad mood is in a few minutes ago. My fault. Naruto was back in the simple wooden cottage where his client lived as a father and grandfather and he was in an argument. What do you mean it was my fault that Sasuke Tame was nearly killed? Sasuke in question was better known as Sasuke Uchiha of the feared Uchiha clan for their katan and their keke Jenke the Sharingan until one of their best members supposedly went mad and slain everyone except for Sasuke who is the younger brother of the clan killer, Itachi Uchiha. Ever since that horrible night, Sasuke acted like he was more important than even the daimyo which got on Naruto's nerves and even more because his childhood crush, Sakura Haruno, is after the jerk and is also the one angry for no clear reason. Why did you have to jump in when Sasuke-kun didn't need help? He was nearly killed when you forced him to take in all those senbon. Sakura, as you can see, is a loud and annoying fangirl of Sasuke that if Naruto wasn't in love with her, he would have slapped her on the cheek. He said that his body moved on his own, and if I didn't barge in, how would have he dodged that attack? And why didn't you take the client to safety while we distract Zabuza like his companion? You could have protected him better that way and he told that but you wouldn't even listen to his word only thinking about your stupid crush. Why do you love him? What has he done for you to earn your affections? And what happened to your feelings for me? Naruto ranted about everything but he instead got hit on the head by an angry Sakura. Shut up Baka. You are nothing but trash that makes Sasuke pull extra weight and for me to get dirty which will ruin everything I did to seduce Sasuke-kun. You don't have a bloodline or a cool jutsu like Sasuke-kun. You don't have skills like Kakashi-sensei. And you don't have my chakra control. Unless you have those, you will never become Hokage. You are the worst ninja that ever lived. This Sakura will never love you, Jut Sasuke kun. Sakura yelled that broke Naruto's heart and dreams that he snapped. He slapped Sakura to the ground and jumped out of a window without opening it first, causing it to break, but the pain couldn't scratch what Naruto has felt all his life, so he didn't care. Now, Naruto is feeling sleepy, so he changed to the opposite direction back to the cottage, thinking of ways to get in and fall asleep without them noticing because sneaking around was the one thing he truly did good at the very moment. Until he felt something hit his foot, causing him to fall on his face. R. What is? When Naruto looked back, he saw a scroll sticking out of the ground, and that was what tripped his foot. Who buries scrolls out here and in such terrible jobs? Naruto thought, anyways, someone buried this important scroll in a hurry and since no one was around. Naruto looked around to see no one but what he didn't notice was that the birds were not moving and there is not wind whatsoever. I guess I should see what is so important in here and hopefully it will help my ninja career. He had no idea how right he was until he opened the scroll. When Naruto opened the scroll, he found three circular matrix like those exploding papers that he had seen in action only these had the kanji for, toad, slug, and, snake. Naruto of course had no idea what they meant of what to do with them when he saw a note on the bottom of the scroll itself. It read. To anyone who finds this scroll, congratulations because this has the secrets and jutsu of the prodigal three which made them strong and infamous. If the reader is terribly taught in the ninja arts, all they have to do is channel their chakra into the storage seals. Good luck in handling the mysteries of the energy chakra. Sound simple enough as those blasted academy teachers actually taught me how to activate my chakra in the first place. Naruto thought as he about to do that until he had something reach his mind so he made a cross of his index and pointer fingers in each hand, cage bunshin no jutsu. An extra two Naruto appeared on each side of the original as they mimicked him and unsealed the three matrixes on the scroll. Instantly, three clouds of smoke appeared, startling the three Narutos and causing the two clones to dispel into smoke themselves. More scrolls. Naruto said in shock and disbelief as it was true, there on top of the seals were three separate piles of scrolls along with other stuff like a sword in its sheath and a pouch revealed to be filled with senbon and daggers making a complete set. Naruto thought it was that as late that he was getting frustrated but he noticed that his sleepiness was gone probably replaced with excitement. 
When he looked closer to the scroll piles, one of them all had, Dobie, on them as well as Best Rookie, and Best Girl. The terms that brought back why he was on a team that doesn't even pay any attention to anyone other than Sasuke and Naruto was the only one who minded that fact. Still, if there is a scroll about the Dobie of the class maybe it can help me as the class Dobie of this year. Naruto thought as he reached for the pile to see that the top one was a summary of Katen and Doten as well as Kejutsu and combination techniques but the most astounding one was the technique called the Rasengan created by the Yandaimi Hokage himself. In the pile was a contract for the Toad clan which said that contracts grant whoever signs it is able to call them through the Kachiyose Jutsu. Naruto found scrolls on Jutsu involving Shuriken and Kanai to multiple them in mid-air similar to the Shadow Clone Jutsu. There were also pointers on to increase their accuracy and throwing potential with these tools. If that was what is inside the Dobi scroll, Naruto thought, maybe there are more to learn from the others and if I read the best girl scroll, I can teach it to Sakura and then she will at least be my teammate. If you hadn't noticed, Naruto didn't address his crush like he used to which meant that he aims to take his ninja career seriously. Anyway, he checked the pile to see a slug summoning contract with scrolls on medical ninjutsu including a raiden that causes the target's nervous system to become tampered with so that the target can't move a limb as he wants. There were also taijutsu scrolls in the pile too of many types. Naruto couldn't wait to try them out to improve his stance. But the one that got him most excited was the scroll on how to use chakra to enhance the ninja's strength, with it the ninja can crack the ground and level mountains. The last one was about a henge that can really alter your age by an extension as it will not only make you younger but also your body younger. Naruto thought it was just for people who hate their old age and appearances and used this technique to escape it all. Still it is interesting that the henge can actually transform. Naruto was told that the henge is just an illusion made to sneak in unexpectedly or fool their targets into overlooking them for another person. Now it was the last pile that got him not astounded or excited but disgusted and dismayed since the knowledge in the scrolls was all about experiments with living test subjects and steal their lives to continue their own. Naruto made a note to burn these scrolls when he learns the Katen in the first pile but not all of them because the scrolls worth keeping were on Doten but also Sweden and Futon and Kenjutsu especially the one on the study of bloodline limits. It told that bloodline limits were mutations in a ninja's genes that live through family lines and since they all have or activated by chakra, they were theorized that they were created from chakra. But when humans tried it, they couldn't meet the amount of chakra to permanently change the DNA of an another human to last until death until they saw more than enough in the biju like the Kiyubi no Kitsune that attacked the Konoha village when Naruto was born. Now when the heavy and magnificent feeling chakra had emerged from Naruto's body while mostly his belly, it got the formers curiously as he somehow remembers feeling that force on the day he was first born so he created his own theory but he prayed to be proved wrong that somehow, in his belly, laid the Kiyubi trap ever since that night. One thing is for sure is that he wants answers and he wants them now, and the only way to find the answers to face the most feared being in the land inside his stomach. Now when the heavy and maleficent feeling chakra had emerged from Naruto's body while mostly his belly, it got the formers curiously as he somehow remembers feeling that force on the day he was first born so he created his own theory but he prayed to be proved wrong that somehow, in his belly, laid the Kiyubi trap ever since that night. One thing is for sure is that he wants answers and he wants them now, and the only way to find the answers to confront the most feared being in the land inside his stomach. Eu. I hope this is where I need to be. Naruto muttered to himself as he trudged through a sewer of some kind with a growing that echoed throughout the hallways and Naruto was headed in its direction, almost like his destination is the source of the evil tone. Soon or later, Naruto went through what looked an entrance to another chamber which happens to be where a cage containing the very beast whose growl originates. So my jailer has come to pay little old me a visit? If I didn't know better, I bet you are here to tell to die don't cha Naruto. Well too bad because when I die is when you die too. The beast roars at Naruto who keeps himself clam because he knows that to be afraid of a coward isn't the way a ninja does and he is not going to break the chain today. Actually Kiyubi sama, I have come for answers. Why did you attack Konoha? I thought for sure that being sealed will keep you out of reach from the powers of the Sharingan? Wasn't my mother ignoring you in order to convince the village which still had an Uchiha clan that you have perished? You hate humans and if they have no reason to bother you, why abandon your pride to make yourself their enemy by attacking right under their noses? Tell me what is wrong with you. Naruto ranted the questions that only got the Kiyubi to try and attack him with his claws that were contained by the cage. 
I have nothing to answer to a boy who doesn't understand what he is poking his rotten nose into. You don't know what it is like to be seen as a tool, only there to be hated and called a monster. The Kyubi ranted on trying to break Naruto's guard but the blonde-haired ninja remained standing true which quickly angered the biju, tailed beast. It hurts doesn't it? Naruto started that only enraged the Kyubi as it sounded nonsense mocking him, being alone all your life, no one to say good day to you, no one to smile in the morning to bright your day, no one to even look at you. You are there and yet otherwise at the same time. The Kyubi growled at his helplessness feeling that the blonde brat is making fun of it but when he said, it's like falling into darkness slowly with everyone looking back and worse you don't know why isn't anyone helping. It feels like they are telling you that you were never meant to exist and it was God's mistake that you were in their lives. The Kyubi stopped in his tracks at the sad but soft and true statement about his life. You miss them don't you? Naruto asked the Kyubi with caring eyes that threatened to break your heart to reset, the other biju. They were there when you were born, they spoke to you every day, they asked to play with you and you had fun, they smile at you in the mornings, they always there when you sleep, when you were feeling hurt, when you were feeling sad, when you were feeling lonely. Naruto then had tears in his eyes that shocked the Kyubi. I never had such wonder gifts when I woke up in the morning, when I had my birthday, when I was hurt or sad or lonely, never. Ever. Dot you had suffered like I did but you had one thing to keep you going. That you will live to see your fellow biju whom you love like your father who cared for you all, stop it. Naruto looked to the Kyubi to see tears in his eyes, please stop. Dot not another word. Dot kit. Naruto felt bad making his inmate feel this way but he had to remain confident and clam about it so he went and did something reckless. He approached the weeping fox, passed through the bars and hugged the biju on the face. The Kyubi remembered in his youth, when he played with his fellow biju and how they always hug each other with the other as sad or left out. Karama. Naruto looked up to the biju, my father. My siblings. They always called me Karama, their brother and his son. Dot you help me remember my happiness. Please respect that name. It is all I have left of my family. Karama showed joy and yet sadness in his eyes at Naruto who used his chakra aura to dry Karama's tears and warm up his soul. Of course Karama. We are stuck together forever sure we can respect one another but I bet you want me to big because you hate a weak friend right? Naruto was first serious but then pulled a joke with a grin that made Karama smile before something happened and Naruto's image started to fade. Karama. I am waking up and being dragged out of the mindscape. Grab hold. Naruto said in a hurry and Karama touched Naruto's hand and just allowed him to disappear from the mindscape. Maybe I can tell him the real purpose about his kin and it is better since I do what to see my kind before I am just energy floating somewhere else. Naruto then woke up in the middle of the day but then he noticed that every one of the birds that were near will freeze 10 inches away from himself. That told him that within that radius time is moving while time is frozen anywhere further from him. Listen kit. That voice was very familiar to Naruto and he jumped onto his feet, Karama. I can hear you? Naruto yelled into the distance he threw the voice came from. Yes kit. That experience and stunt you pulled caused a mini link between us and more than that. That is what I want to talk about. Karama revealed to be talking from the inside of the mindscape. Feels kind weird that I am in two places at once and yet I am not. Naruto muttered until he sat down to listen to his tenant which sounded soft and humble. Like it was about to his last days. You guessed correctly kit. When you opened those scrolls, it caused a third and a sixth of my chakra to leave my body causing me to only have the reserves less than Shukaku. R. I am not going to hear the last of his bragging if he finds out. Karama ranted on and on when he realized that he slipped his tongue a little that got Naruto shocked and worried. You mean that you were a weakened state because of me? Naruto yelled in his mind. He felt that his actions have led to the death of Karama and it will be before he could see his kin again. It is a shock huh? Rest assured because I have a request to ask of you. Karama told Naruto calm him down and rise up his spirits. Yes Karama ni san. Naruto wanted to remind his tenant of his days as a brother which worked as the latter smiled warmly. When you opened the scrolls, you activated a mechanism even I hadn't seen in this age but the effects are noticeable as time around all but my kin or yours has halted till 5 years will pass to us. When that is over, instead of 60 months, only 60 seconds for them. And yet we will maintain our appearances as strange growth spurts to everyone. Karama explained that introduced awe and a slight guilt in Naruto's heart so the biju shook his head at the idea that Naruto broke the world. Okay Karama. 
What did we do until then? Naruto wanted to know how spend five years with only the Biju and his Kayan to talk to. Kurama had a smile on his face, a real smile this time. We are going to travel the land to train and learn about our kin by meeting them personally. Okay Kurama. What did we do until then? Naruto wanted to know how spend five years with only the Biju and his Kayan to talk to. Kurama had a smile on his face, a real smile this time. We are going to travel the land to train and learn about our kin by meeting them personally. So Kurama. Naruto. Who is now wearing a black jacket to cover his orange shirt with sliver fur markings and trench pants fitted with the sword in its scabbard the pouch of needles and ninja tools with ninja sandals on his feet, asked his closest friend yet, if time is frozen around us, how are we going to eat? Well Naruto kit. Kurama realized that with Naruto as a jailer was much better than the previous ones including the boy's mother, since only you can cause time to follow and no one can stop you from your actions, you can stock on supplies and when you settle in a home you can grow your own food. Sounds simple huh? Kurama knew it was in a hurry but so was the predicament the two were placed in. I guess so Kurama but should my kin notice time not moving as well? Naruto has gained more insight from reading the scrolls on observation and strategy, he needed to be good at both to be Hokage. Yes but I can feel my kind even from halfway across the elemental countries and not one of them or the host is awake like something had caused them to sleep in dam. Kurama started out explaining when he released something, something bad. Shukaku has taken over his host and is slowly approaching Sanakagor, village hidden in the sand. That is where we are headed. Naruto yelled. When thinking about where to go, Wind Country happened to be one of the closest to Wave Country as Fire Country so the duo set there to uncover more knowledge on futon and weaponry. Now they have to move faster to save it before they even first saw the village. Thanks to his years of running from mobs back home. Naruto made it to Suna in record time while navigating through deserts and sandstorms with Kurama's help by detecting constant heat sources in the frozen folk in the village. Naruto jumped to the tallest post since he learned that he can use his chakra to stick to any surface which was necessary for a ninja. He saw Shukaku still approaching the village with murder in his eyes. Naruto had to think of something and think of it fast. Shukaku aka Ichibi no Tanuki, one-tailed raccoon was feared for his complete control over sand and his murderous personality. He was just living his life as trapped in his latest host while constantly telling him who to kill if he was to stop the pain and nightmares that he acted like the host's mother when it was her that Shukaku killed in the first place, that is until his host fell asleep for some reason and with the ceiling that weak, Shukaku could easily take the chance to take over the body and morph it to his liking. Shukaku. The biju froze at the voice of a human addressing him with his actual name, not, demon, or, Ichibi. Normally a being like the Biju will be delighted but with all that hatred for humans, they despised their names used like that of commoners. He looked to the source of the voice, Naruto. Who dare uses my name and by what means did you correctly guessed it? Shukaku demanded of Naruto who just stood there strong and true but also concentrating, like he is searching for something but the sand Biju won't have it, Futon, Rankudan, Wind Style, Drilling Air Bullet. The wind bullet hit Naruto spot on but the blonde then turned into smoke. This brat knows Cage Bunshin. Shukaku thought as he searched his home turf for his prey, I have to ambit that is such good talent for someone that age. How did he have the chakra reverses to even make one and to make it last for so long? Meanwhile, the original Naruto was spying on Shukaku from a distant sand dune where he was for quite the while. Something doesn't add up Kurama. Naruto spoke to his tenant quietly. You said that your brother uses sand and when in a desert, he should know that I am over here by manipulating the sand around me by he didn't. Somehow the seal on Shukaku is still working as he can't use his full power but Shukaku isn't one to speak his disadvantages out loud or show them for that matter. Kurama shared his theory to Naruto who listened and read through his options until he remembered that while wind wins over lightning, it loses to fire and he had a collection of Kaden when he started traveling but it was right when he got up when he remembered something else he can use that just might help him win this fight. Show yourself Gaki, brat or boy. Shukaku was getting impatient with this fight, that Gaki must have found out that the blasted seal is preventing me to use all my powers so being a desert makes no difference and I can't have him tell anyone about this humiliation. And with a shard of pride in the desire to kill, the biju knew that the fight isn't over yet and he will never himself a coward for giving up without killing the blonde with his own hands. Then his sands felt a disruption the shape of footprints in a wide range. The person is running, running in his direction. 
Sure enough Shukaku saw Naruto running towards him. Futon. Daitopa, wind style, great breakthrough, Naruto inhaled and shoot a strong gust of wind at Shukaku who prepared to brace when he saw that Naruto was trying to injure him with explosion notes strapped to Kanai but with such terrible accuracy. Ha ha ha. Trying to attack me with such horrible throwing. Shukaku released that the futon was aimed to blast him away, away from Suna. Shukaku never noticed that he was facing the village with his frustration at Naruto. Damn Gaki. Futon. Rankuden. Shukaku launched another air bullet at Naruto when. Futon. Rankuden. Naruto shot an air bullet that cancelled out Shukaku's. To be able to match a biju with their personal jutsu was nothing short of a miracle. And this miracle only enraged Shukaku further. Alas. This was just what Naruto wanted for Shukaku to do because the kanai left in the sand turned into smoke revealing Naruto's. They then placed their hands in a hand seal with their months convulsing like a squirrel with a mouthful of nuts. Kaden. Enden. Fire style. Flame bombs. Futon. Rankuden. Yes. Shukaku used his futon at the same time as the Naruto's used their Kaden causing the air in the biju mouth to heat up and explode. The flames scorched Shukaku as he panicked and even that got him even more roasted. This is prefect for Naruto to finish his plan and that was what he did. Gogyo Fuin. Five elemental seal. Naruto's fingers were covered in pure chakra as they touched a sealing matrix like on the scrolls and Shukaku screeched and he contorted and shrank into the shape of a boy who is clearly 13 years old but also obviously had been born prematurely. He was a redhead wearing desert clothes and a gourd strapped to his back. The boy then began to stir. Wh what happened? Was I asleep? Gasp asterisk as soon a okay. The boy asked worriedly which Naruto saw that his brother was probably tortured in Suna just like he was but he wasn't mentally strong enough to survive it as it successfully warped his mind but then again, I will be too if I couldn't get any sleep in my whole life. Suna is fine but that isn't important, we need to introduce ourselves. Naruto calmly said which got the boy looking a little embarrassed. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. Jailer of Karama the Kiyubi Kitsune and you are. The boy seemed to catch on. My name is Gara, Jinchuriki, human sacrifice, of Ichibi Tanuki. The boy named Gara made his introduction but froze when Naruto scowled at him. After what the blonde did to defeat the sand biju made Gara afraid of him angry more than the former. First of all, Gara ni san. Naruto spoke in a tone of great anger and disappointment. Karama isn't just a random name I came up with just because I am tired of the title. Kiyubi. It is a name that Kurama's father thought of and he greatly treasures it like your tenant treasures his real name, Shukaku. If you don't like it then too bad, their names are all they ever had of their beloved father and I am assuming your father wasn't such, right? Naruto got his desired answer when Gara meekly nodded, now you are going to be a good boy and listen to me for now on understand. Gara again nodded, First is that you will show me where the library on every futon in this village and if you don't destroy something I might give you a bonus and teach a doden that will be of great help in your battles. Are we clear? Naruto raised his voice for the last and Gara Nadal again and began to lead his new brother around the village of Suna. First of all Gara ni san. Naruto spoke in a tone of great anger and disappointment. Karama isn't just a random name I came up with just because I am tired of the title. Kiyubi. It is a name that Kurama's father thought of and he greatly treasures it like your tenant treasures his real name, Shukaku. If you don't like it then too bad, their names are all they ever had of their beloved father and I am assuming your father wasn't such, right? Naruto got his desired answer when Gara meekly nodded, now you are going to be a good boy and listen to me for now on understand. Gara again nodded. First is that you will show me where the library on every futon in this village and if you don't destroy something I might give you a bonus and teach a doden that will be of great help in your battles. Are we clear? Naruto raised his voice for the last and Gara Nadal again and began to lead his new brother around the village of Suna. So where are we going Naruto ni san? Gara asked as he and his new brother Naruto left Suna them looking back as a sign of certain return. After learning that something had frozen the world or speeded up time to appear normal for all Jinchuriki and Biju while much more for everyone else. Well Gara ni Chan. Naruto knew that Gara was his age but with him shorter than him and that he was far behind in Jinchuriki standards, he calls the latter as his little brother, until Gara will prove otherwise. Gara is not annoyed by it because he is an obedient little fellow if you prove to be more scary than Shukaku. Kurama has picked up one of his kin near here. Chome aka the Nanabi no Kabutomush. 
Is he found here in wind country? Gara had the fact that Biju have gender into his head after still insist of calling his tenant an it. No, it is in river country. Also it is in one of the true, hidden, ninja villages, Takigakur. Naruto answered Gara. What he didn't say was that the hose felt female like a teenage girl but he assumed that Gara only had experience with girls from his older sister and even then he is a novice. Will it be cooler than Suna? When Gara heard that there were other lands with different weather and environments than his home village, he wanted to first go to a cool and moist country compared to the desert land of wind country. It should because the village has a waterfall in its name. Naruto remarked with a smirk. Yet that struck something in Gara's mind. Naruto ni san, he said to grab Naruto's attention. Why are the ninja villages are called, hidden? But even a kid can find them. That was a good question that Naruto even asked the other day. Perhaps is because ninjas work the best undercover and hiding from their targets and enemies. Naruto explained until his smirk turned into a scowl that spelled bad for Gara's eyes. But even noble warriors become overconfident and believe that they are so good they cannot be found even if their enemies knew their location. Gara didn't say a word and just nodded as the two Jinchuriki brothers finally crossed the border of river country and wind country. Are you sure this is it? Gara asked as he and Naruto were found looking at a waterfall while at the pond at its base which seemed to be where the water was going. Yes Gara ni chan. This is the entrance and the door is right in front of us. Naruto answered with slight disappointment that his younger brother was so ignorant what is oblivious to a ninja. If we were to go through the waterfall, we will just hit a stone wall. So the front door is more like a tunnel leading to a clearing in the forest behind it. But Nisan. When I flew above, I saw no clearing. Gara whined. While traveling to this waterfall, Naruto helped his brother harness his control over sand granted from Shukaku's presence in the seal. This included durable domes and sky stands which were pretty useful and are unique enough to not be copied. That is what the villagers want their enemies to think as well as foreigners because the latter have loose lips and enemy ninja trained to listen to loose lips. Naruto scolded his brother who looked down embarrassed. Now all we have to do is swim underneath the pond at the base of the waterfall. That is if they taught you how to swim back in Suna. Naruto explained the plan until he shot a, tell me wrong, look on his face at Gara, who did nothing which meant, no, in that case, I will have to improvise this time but once we settle in. Gara listened, you will have to listen, learn this jutsu, add it to your arsenal and practice your swimming. Clear? Gara nodded. Naruto then took out a seal and placed it on Gara's head and Ten activated it. To any untrained eye, nothing happened but as an air mask to otherwise good enough. Naruto then made his own air mask and took his brother into the pond and swam through. The air masks last up to a couple of hours of air if breathing is steady. Once the duo rose from the water, they saw a wonder of the world to their eyes. The village was beautiful. The middle had the biggest tree any of the two boys ever seen. The top was so thick and wide that it made the illusion of many more trees forming a close-knit group. No wonder the atmosphere is so moist and cool and the houses were built so close to the tree that the tallest building is probably where the most important figure lives. Everyone here is also frozen in time Nisan. Gara pointed out and it was true. Like in Suna, people were there but were not moving. Time has halted for them. Yes but Chomei's host is like the two of us, moving in at our time speed. Naruto remarked as he helped Gara onto dry land. Gara was ranting in his mind that on how he was suddenly grateful to be on dry land from living in a desert. So let's go in that direction because the signature is coming from there. Karama can tell. Naruto pointed towards a treehouse and it looks like it has been ransacked previously like Naruto's apartment back home. Naruto and Gara, having been taught of it by the former, walked up the three to the front door and knocked on it. What do you want? The two boys heard a girl's voice from inside and from the tone. This girl doesn't like visitors. This is your brothers Kiyubi and Ichibi out here wanting to meet our new sister. Naruto spoke since Gara was frightened by the harsh tone. It sounded like an angry older sister of his or when Shukaku acted like his mother. The boys then heard crashing and tumbling before the clicking of the door like it was unlocked. That was what they thought was the verdict and let themselves in to find a mess of a room they stepped into. Then a girl of 17 came in to greet her new brothers and Naruto realized that he couldn't keep his eyes off of her. She was gorgeous in his mind with perfectly light tan and grass green hair while wearing a white shirt and blue shorts that brought out her nice toned legs, maybe from running repeatedly every single day, like Naruto himself. Are you here to harm me? 
The girl asked meekly that made Gara reminded of himself in his childhood. Timid, shy and afraid of harm. Naruto didn't show it but the same things ran through his mind but he ignored them to place a reassuring hand on her shoulder. We understand your fear and don't worry. Fellow Jinchuriki will never harm one of our kin. We only want to know that we are not alone in this world mmph. Naruto was then embraced by the girl crying into his chest. Naruto couldn't forget about Gara and motioned him to come into the hug which he did. They were at it for quite the while but they didn't care. The boys got a sister and the girl got brothers. After hugging for so long, they left it reluctantly but Naruto couldn't get the girl from his chest. She didn't want to leave the warmth that emitted from him into her hurt heart. She did however turn into a more comfortable position in the blonde's arms. My name is Fu and what are your names? The girl called Fu introduced herself to which the boys smiled. My name is Naruto Uzumaki and the redhead with the gourd is Gara. We are glad to meet another Jinchuriki and a girl at that. We needed an older sister to keep us from doing something stupid or reckless and share us some tips on other girls. Fu felt a little warm at first that she met someone who wanted her company but then blushed at the last part which confused Gara. Sure but not that last one today. Fu yelled blushing yet. Maybe I can if these two boys are keeping getting handsome especially you blonde. She was broken from her thoughts when Naruto spoke again. From I understand, your tenant is mostly an earth type biju but with knowledge in Sweden and Futon as well. Fu nodded not trusting her voice at how Naruto correctly the element of the Nanabi. Gara is a Futon user like me but also a Doden user so we should learn and share among each other and also Fu Chan. Fu blushed harder at the nickname of affection. She had seen it when no one is looking for her but now she never dreamed to feel it for herself. Gara grew up in a desert with barely any places like a pond or lake so he doesn't know how to swim. Gara still looked embarrassed that caused Fu to giggle at how her new brother acts like a little and adorable kid. Also I have a lot of mysteries for me to solve myself and I can't by moving around. I need to be able to settle for a year max here if that isn't any trouble for you Fu Chan. That last one sparked something in Fu's heart as she boldly dove into Naruto's chest and kissed him on the cheek. The boys were shocked but Fu didn't care about it at all she was too happy. A few days later at a mountain cliff, where Fu usually stayed to remain safe from the village she is training to protect. The three Jinchuriki stayed there to get to know everyone else better. For Fu herself, she was going to get more out of Naruto than she ever dreamed of. Naruto was looking out into the opening away from Taki trying to get his mind over the fact that the world is frozen around the Biju and Jinchuriki. He was so into it that he didn't notice a pair of arms about to grab him when they instead covered Naruto's eyes with the palms of his hands. Guess who? A voice that was obviously belonged to a girl with the scent of spring water and insects so it wasn't hard to select out of a crowd. Naruto just smiled and turned to hug the girl revealed to be Fu playing with him. I am glad that one of us can have a good childhood and remind us of it. Naruto spoke not even angry of Fu's playing or teasing, like he was welcoming it. That is what the green-haired goddess among Mushi thought was the case. Fu was relieved that she didn't make his new brother angry. You see she wanted a brother when he got Gara, but she found it nearly impossible to stay with Naruto as a brother without succumbing to strong attractive feelings for him. She didn't tell Naruto of this as she never wanted to alienate one of her new brothers that she wanted to get into his pants rather than his arms. Naru-kun, Fu said to grab his attention, CC can I dot ask you s something Fu was really nervous when she first heard the story of Naruto beating a biju even if Shukaku was the weakest, he had the might of 10 janin and 3 cage minimum at his disposal. She then saw him in action and she couldn't ignore the story anymore. She didn't want to lose one of her new brothers and gain an enemy of him instead, she had enough of them in her life anyways. Sure Fu Chan, I am listening. The girl in question jumped her heart at how Naruto was following her example and started treating her like she was his girlfriend, not that she minded terribly. Fu Chan. Are you afraid to lose me about Karama? Naruto knew better than keep secrets that can influence on a great magnitude so he took it slow and told the two Jinchuriki that he was the first one of them all to witness the death of a biju. From being made out of energy, they can be converted into randomness and what made them individual beings all shatters and lost forever. If you do, I will definitely be your mate. Fu heard that answer and kissed Naruto, her brother and now lover, on the lips furiously and with passion. She cried that she cans no longer fight to ignore or worse forget her growing affections for the blonde ninja. Fu kissed one last kiss on her over's lips before settling further into the developing pillow that is called a man's chest. Good night Naru-kun. 
Fu said as she became engulfed in sleep. Good night Fu Chan. Naruto smiled at his fortune as the first girl he ever had his first time with even though it was short, it was special. He then dreamed of the happiness he created with the help of his brother and lover. A few months later, what do you mean I have to go back to Suna? The Jinchuriki siblings had been staying at a cottage near a lake where Fu often stayed when she felt that it was too dangerous at her treehouse. And why are you leaving me Naruto-kun? Fu had closer to Naruto over the days but at the time, it was all ruled over as sibling affection yet lately the signs meant something even greater and closer. Even Gara, though that his sister has fallen for his big brother, he doesn't know how right he was. I am sorry Gara ni chan, Fu chan but this is not for me but for your sake. Naruto had been in the heat of the argument ever since he made the announcement that he is leaving his girlfriend in Taki and see his brother off to Suna. Gara ni chan, we are barely a month different in age but you were always my younger brother and if I can't guide you or protect you, you will perish in dishonor and neither of us want that to happen. Gara saw that and couldn't speak a word because he wanted this when he asked Naruto to be a ninja when the latter turned to his Fu and kissed her square on the lips, the girl didn't finch and dove in the kiss. She pouted when Naruto cancelled the kiss, Fu Chan, I love you and that is why I want to take things further. To be with you for eternity and in order to perform this, we must be apart. It will allow you to reflect on everything. Naruto knew that his family was still confused and protesting so he focused his attention on both of them. This is what I want to remember while we are apart. Gara and Fu sat down and listened, when one is only earth, he is just a lifeless and empty shell and when one is only heaven, he is just a wandering soul forever unable to settle. This phrase really brought back some sense but Gara and Fu wanted to hear everything so they continue listening. Take us for example. If we just enjoy company and physical affection, we are cold and emotionless when it is all gone. Just like if we just have thoughts and mental comfort, we just endless wander and never stop to rest when it is all gone. I don't it to happen to any of you. Naruto finished his speech and his family both went up in tears and embraced him heartily. Ever since that day, the three Jinchuriki double and up to triple training in order to squish the learning into one last week. By the end, Naruto and Gara were packed and ready to leave in separate directions. This is where we start five years of being apart and I do wish you luck as I won't be around to do so. Gara, you have your destination in mind, right? The redhead nodded and hugged his older brother and then Fu as he waved them off and took off on his sand platform. Our little brother has grown up fast and he shows promise, doesn't he? Fu cried at the sight of her baby brother going off in the cruel world alone. Naruto invited her into an embrace and she took drenching Naruto's shirt with hot tears. Then Naruto gently brought up Fu's face to kiss her with passion. She embraced the kiss like he was to disappear if she let go. You are his big sister and the only one to stop us in our tracks so I hope you remain strong and become stronger okay Fu Chan. Naruto politely asked of his official girlfriend who smiled and nodded. They shared one last kiss and the blonde sage took off to places unknown even to him. Fu just sat there clutching the necklace Naruto made for her to help her reflect and remember all the happy times she had ever since she was born. This is where we start five years of being apart and I do wish you luck as I won't be around to do so. Gara you have your destination in mind right? The redhead nodded and hugged his older brother and then Fu as he waved them off and took off on his sand platform. Our little brother has grown up fast and he shows promise, doesn't he? Fu cried at the sight of her baby brother going off in the cruel world alone. Naruto invited her into an embrace and she took drenching Naruto's shirt with hot tears. Then Naruto gently brought up Fu's face to kiss her with passion. She embraced the kiss like he was to disappear if she let go. You are his big sister and the only one to stop us in our tracks so I hope you remain strong and become stronger okay Fu Chan. Naruto politely asked of his official girlfriend who smiled and nodded. They shared one last kiss and the blonde sage took off to places unknown even to him. Fu just sat there clutching the necklace Naruto made for her to help her reflect and remember all the happy times she had ever since she was born. Well it has been five years has it Kurama. Naruto jovially walked down what happened to be near where it all began, like fate was into play and Naruto never believes in fate. When he heard coughing and felt agonizing pain from Kurama, Naruto panicked and hurried into his mindscape to see Kurama just lying there with faint breathing. Kurama. Naruto claimed down and embraced his tenant, I am sorry. Kurama opened his eyes to a tearful Naruto hugging his muzzle like he was to disappear if let go. I should have done more for you. No kit. 
Karama's voice seemed broken and weak, like that of a dying elder man. I was sealed in the best host ever and all I ever done was to let my empty hatred make myself your enemy for your life. Naruto felt like his heart was going to shatter as he listened to the dying words of Karama no Kiyubi Kitsune. You do keep your promises even against odds out of your favor, even those that can kill you. I got to say my last words to my kin and I bet that I am going to make them worry because I am going to remind everyone that even the biju can die. Naruto Uzumaki, you have what was destined for you and you have done the world more than any other had ever done. I will be waiting in heaven for you and your stories of adventure. See you. There. Sochi, means sun, and just like that, Kurama had faded from existence with the last of his chakra seeped into Naruto's chakra coils. Naruto just stood there crying as he lost his first friend in his life and dried his tears with ambitions to see that the rest of his friends are protected and able to self-protect as well. What a night, we better get to Konoha to train my Sharingan Kakashi sensei. Sasuke muttered to his sensei with the gravity-defying gray hair and wears a mask over his mouth. Yeah and you will be the best genin in our class Sasuke-kun. Sakura Haruno, the one that caused this whole mess, cheered for her crush who never said anything other than, HN, at the voice of fangirls. If you are any louder Sakura, you will wake up the whole village so early in the morning. This voice was of a young man and when they turned, they saw what caused the boys to drop their laws and Sakura to faint with a heated face. The, young man before them looked more like 18 rather than 13 wearing grey jacket with lave markings and four sheets of paper flapping on the back like a flag over an orange and black shirt. On his waist acting like a belt was headband with a symbol of a whirlpool, covering his legs were black trench pants with many pockets, ninja sandals covered his feet, on his forehead was a bandana in a gusting pattern with a headband with a symbol of a leaf and on his hands were black and fingerless gloves. Strangely thou he is nibbling on two senbon in his mouth for some reason. The Dobies got a wardrobe change, big deal. It is the fact that my Sharingan is picking up chakra levels that dwarf even Kakashi senseis. I need that power to kill him. Sasuke thought in his usual, I don't care, and, gimme that power, attitude. What is wrong with me? Suddenly I can't decide between this handsome Naruto and Sasuke kun. Sakura didn't know that there were some faint markings on the back of head glowing when she ranted in her mind between her confusing feelings. Naruto looked a lot like sensei now. Is it because he finally ate those vegetables I offered him? Kakashi knew he was not being a good teacher but he had a lot to respect including his teammate and his teacher's legacy. Hey Dobi. Sasuke said to grab Naruto's attention and it worked for a little. Yay teme. Naruto replied in a bored tone that made Sasuke angrier. Kakashi relieved that the blonde didn't explode at Sasuke. And the weird thing was Sakura feeling a little aroused and smitten. You think having a new look means you're the big dog around? I can't stand you stealing my thunder. Fight me now. Sasuke demanded in an emo tone but he was too into his obsessions to notice that Sakura didn't cheer for him like in the academy. We have the whole morning until we need to return to the village so why not? Naruto spoke in a casual tone that really made Sakura's heartbeat and Sasuke happy, a little. Kakashi noticed Sakura's reaction and smiled hoping that with a new role model. Sakura can take her ninja career more serious. Later, in a field a good distance from the cottage to ensure minimum damage caused by the spar. Alright everyone. Kakashi spoke as his role of proctor of this spar. I want a clean match, no serious injuries or killing okay? Yes sensei. Whatever. Sasuke takes his clan's fighting stance while Naruto relaxes while standing up. This stuck a nerve in Sasuke as he felt insulted by his opponent's behavior. Then Naruto lifted a finger to one of the senbon in his mouth and tapped it. Then Sasuke heard sounds that hurt his ears and his mind but his pride refused him to quit after that and he charged to hit Naruto but as the last minute, his fist went in another direction not even phasing Naruto. No matter what he did to hit him, Sasuke always missed Naruto who just stood there all bored and stuff. Then Naruto moved faster than anyone even Kakashi has ever seen since his late sensei and shot two extra senbon at the back of Sasuke's neck causing him to be knocked out. Sakura and Kakashi were shocked at how professionally Naruto disposed of his opponent, with calmness, cleverness and sneakiness. Those three are on the long list of what makes a ninja good and even great in the harsh world he fights and lives in. This Naruto wasn't the one like in the academy. It is like he is a sage, was their collective thought. They had no idea. Sakura and Kakashi were shocked at how professionally Naruto disposed of his opponent, 
with calmness, cleverness and sneakiness. Those three are on the long list of what makes a ninja good and even great in the harsh world he fights and lives in. This Naruto wasn't the one like in the academy. It is like he is a sage, was their collective thought. They had no idea. After leaving Wave with the town people calling the completed bridge after Naruto's words that finally got them out of the darkness they were forced to hide in and stand up to Gato's bandits, Team 7 set on home to Konoha. Sasuke was focused on training his Sharingan that he attained from that near-death experience. Kakashi was planning on asking the Hokage for a preferred change to the team. Naruto was thinking on creating his own techniques that were based on that of the Senen, and Sakura's thoughts were the most curious. They were filled with memories of her as a child bullied for her hair color and her forehead, she was even assaulted by bullies until a blonde boy about her age came and scared away the bullies while comforting her with words that struck awe and love in her heart all leading up to when her mother asked her to enter a room for some reason with a feeling of fear and uncertainty. She was hoping that Naruto will understand her confusion and struggle of feelings and be there to help her. Under an hour, the gates of Konohagakure were in sight and after properly identifying Team 7 went to report to the Hokage. So what I got so far is that a simple C rank mission went B rank when the Demon Brothers came into the picture and ultimately turned to an A rank when Zabuza Momochi arrived to kill the client. A week later, the swordsman was killed on the bridge by bandits but not before killing a business tyrant that was ruining the town of Wave. The finished bridge was named after Naruto-kun and nothing exploded during your trip back. What did I miss? Here is an Serutobi of the Serutobi clan known for their bojustu, staff techniques, and monkey summons was the Sandiami Hokage back into office after his successor and his wife got killed 13 years ago. He also was a grandpa figure to Naruto during his childhood as it was he who gave an apartment to Naruto to live in after being kicked out of the orphanage into the streets. Naruto knew he was getting senile due to his age but now as a new person, he intended to change that before the third meets his demise. Yes Gigi, still me and Sensei have things to discuss about the mission. So please hear us out, okay? Naruto requested out of the Hokage which his two teammates were wondering if Naruto was still stupid to call their leader like that. Hiruzen didn't mind since he does have an actual grandson even though it was that fact that made his old age even worse. When the third saw how mature and calm that Naruto had become over that mission so he wants to listen to what he is about to say. I will go first Kakashi sensei because it won't take long. Kakashi felt like protesting but his laziness and desire to finish his porn book won and he left to wait outside the door. Now Gigi, I have trusted you because you were the Hokage and the real ninja or better yet person out of this village filled with haters and their breeding of haters. Now I am going to but this trust to the test by entrusting two things to do. The third listened, one, that you grow a backbone and take every ninja privilege from the stupid civilian council so you won't have to face your angry teachers and processors in the afterlife. Naruto said with a smirk at the third's pale face at the truth behind that fact, too. That I have everything there is to know about Orochimaru, your student of course. Now Hiruzen was listening as Naruto shared all the secrets his memorized from the scrolls before burning them and Hiruzen nodded and wrote them down. And that's everything, now would you prevent me from regretting trusting you and do as I said? It will help the people and you. Without a village but people around to build another like the previous yet with a village but no people is empty and dead and worthless. Remember that to tell your successors okay? The third nodded but then felt like he just let his doom get to him at last when Naruto noticed something interesting on the desk and signed. Gigi what is this? Naruto spoke in a curious turned dark tone and Hiruzen just whimpered and back away from the enraged blonde. Kakashi was outside giggling like a schoolgirl looking at naked photos of her crush as he read his favorite book outside the Hokage office. What he didn't notice was the growing killer intent on the other side of the door and that the other Jonin are approaching the office for a shared reason. One of them, a woman noticed Kakashi's activities. You still read that disgusting hentai. The woman with black hair, white robes and bandages covering her arms and hands, and ruby red eyes asked in a tone of ire. Hum. Did you say something Kurenai? Kakashi lazily spoke that irked the woman named Kurenai further and seemed to provoke another join with eyebrows the size of giant caterpillars in a hideous green jumpsuit. No one knew which is worst. Naruto's old jumpsuit are this weirdest. R. Why are you always so hip, my eternal rival? The weirdo nearly yelled the Jonin's ears off with that declaration of nonsense. Damn it guy. Will you be quiet? A Jonin that looked like a younger and taller Hiruzen but that smokes with a sash with the kanji, 
Japanese lettering, for 12, around his waist. You are damping our flames of youth with your UNYOUTHFUL smoking, Asuma. The weirdo named Guy had a point because the one named Asuma was murdering everyone with his smoke. But before Asuma can argue, a loud crash was heard inside the office, alerting the Jonin. Gigi. I am God and murder you. Come back here. How dare you. Kakashi, who was nearest to the door, went to open the office when the door blew of the hinges, sandwiching the Jonin between the wall and the door. Out came a scared looking Hiruzen running like a pervert found by a female mob only the mob was named Naruto Uzumaki who came out of the office looking angry as hell. Help. Hiruzen could only do that when he is chased by an enraged Naruto trying to slice him into tomorrow morning's bacon. The Jonin moved in the intercept the blonde while the Hokage ran behind but somehow, Naruto slipped through and continued chasing his adoptive grandfather. The Jonin were wondering how Naruto was able to do it. That is that the male Jonins were while the female Jonin couldn't stop blushing at the blonde's new appearance and muscles. Naruto what are you doing? Kakashi managed to get free and yell in a tone that knocked the Jonin out of their stupor, caused the third to jump out of his skin but Naruto didn't flinch. He just went to the women, mainly Kurenai and handed her a note that caused Hiruzen to grow pale in the face. This scared the other Jonin because if the professor can be frightened by something like that, it was something bad. They couldn't be any more right when Kurenai grew in anger as she read the note until she reached Naruto's anger amount and marched to follow Naruto's example. This time she was successful and the third got a bump threatening to crack his skull. What was that Kurenai? Kakashi yelled at the enraged mistress, one of his biggest mistakes as his face was buried into the wall beside himself. She then went to Naruto and cried on his shoulder. The Jonin were shocked especially Asuma who glared with envy. A clear sign he has a crush on the woman, childish isn't it? What? What heart? Naruto got an earful that was something like this when had the luck of a Kitsune and Kami on his side to have the female Genin who will be taking the exams assembled in one place and after he told them about the new and stupid rule about team dynamics. Ino and Tenten were the type to be disgusted by the idea of making out with a weirdo and an fate asshole, while Ino a lazy genius and a messy pig they pointed out. Hanada was heartbroken because she was on the team with a boy obsessed with her features and she wanted her crush to take her first kiss and her virginity and Sakura couldn't believe she liked the idea of making out with the Teme aka Sasuke. Yes I know. I wanted to murder Gigi for it too but I think that Jiraiya wrote it. Naruto pointed out to calm the girls down by replacing their initial feelings with that of confusion. That arrow Senen was careless to drop some of his dirty research notes and I happened to notice that the lettering on that stupid, new rule, paper match that on the notes. If you want to kill him, check the hot springs for giggling of a schoolgirl peeking on her crush. Naruto told the girls who flew like the wind doing just that. Naruto smiled because if he did get trained by Jiraiya, it won't change a thing because he knew what the toad sage did. After the girls had a rad stress relieving session called, Beat the Picking Tom of the Hot Springs, they all still remember about the rule they were supposed to follow. They wanted to remain virgins until they each form a relationship. That is until Hanada suddenly had a thought that can either worsen or brighten the female dilemma. Why not make out with Naruto-kun as a five-sum? Yes, I can tell that each of us has a crush on Naruto. Just that we had reasons why we didn't know about it even Naruto-kun himself. He is not happy about either. Hanada said without one stutter like usual. But how did you know that? Sakura asked because she was Naruto's teammate and this was news to her. Like I said, we have reasons for keeping this a secret including me. Hanada answered in a way that the girls kept listening, myself did it because Naruto-kun thought that if me, the princess of a noble clan, ever had a relationship with someone who lived on the streets like him, it will ruin my life or the only family I have left so he asked me to keep everyone thinking that I am just a hopeless stalker. If fact, he was the only one who noticed it. Everyone else including the Hokage couldn't notice it. That was how Naruto-kun kept me knowing that he still loved me. The girls thought that the story made a lot of sense and it really shone a new light on the knucklehead who wore only orange. Tenten then spoke, I have to admit that the blonde was a little cute with those whisker marks, they were real. I also thought he was awesome with how he can fend of bullies many times his own size and that he always snuck into stores just to give me my favorite drink, lemon tea. Tenten ranted on and on until she noticed stares from the Kunoichi on how childish their academy senior acted. Then Ino spoke up, I should have listened to Naruto about my friendship with you Sakura. The said girl was shocked that her rival in the academy called her by her name. 
When we first started our friendship, you always talked about how Naruto always played with you when no one will so I thought I can be his friend. But the first time I talked to him was after I became infatuated with Sasuke and he was angry to hear that we became rivals instead of friends. He said that I destroyed what Sakura wanted the most, a friend and he meant a real friend. The girls knew that Ino wasn't done. Naruto always defined a friend as someone to share secrets, times, interests and more importantly our troubles. He said that friends are around for each other when the other is sad, lonely or troubled because he hated those who see suffering but don't do anything about it. He wanted everyone to be involved with friends' problems because it always proves that friends look for each other. Now that I look back, I was called Sakura's friend because we both loved flowers and need someone to play with. The girls began to tear up at the words of an experienced sage in Naruto. Everyone I ever met said that girls are flowers because they are too fragile to be ninjas, just there to be controlled, and can never be important because they call themselves higher than stupid flowers. The girls were shocked. I still loved flowers even after that but my clan always said that their business was too important to deal with all that. Naruto was the one who respected me for my everlasting love for flowers. He always told me that girls like flowers because they bring beauty and peace to dark times and they are fragile because girls have boys to help them grow and nurture and that was what made us beautiful. Ino finally broke her voice into crying so the other girls went comfort her but a foreign pair of arms snatched the girl from them and into Naruto's chest. The girls couldn't tell if Ino already knew or was just happy that her real crush was comforting her. In the girl's mind, she is reflecting on how a young Naruto always was there for her when she is down from the teasing and bullying. The boy, no man smiled in a way that caused the girls to blush and somehow Ino too and also helped them relax. I thought I heard a fair lady cry so I came as fast as I can. Sleep Ino chan, it always helps. Naruto told the weeping girl who halted her tears and just dose of in the blonde's chest. He then picked up Ino bridal style and gently as Ino was still able to sleep peacefully in Naruto's chest. The other girls were ranted in their heads because they felt like they wished to be in Ino's shoes. If you have the time girls, Naruto said to get their attention, I just got Gigi to give me a real house but once he was in a hurry, he got one big enough for ten people. Two in each room. The girls suddenly felt excited and Naruto smiled at it, like I said, if you have the time you can drop and visit. I must warn you that I just moved in and I haven't finished unpacking and dusting. No. No, we have all day to do what we want so of course we will help. Sakura spoke for the first time but not one of the girls ever protested so Naruto led the way to a three-story house that looked like it hasn't been used yet. I know it is not impressive but that is only because I was in the middle of moving in when I dropped into your conversation. Sorry about that anyways. Naruto apologized but the girls said that he was never at fault during that time. As they went in, they saw that there were still boxes of stuff to be placed into the new house. They stayed and helped Naruto with his stuff. Of course he had to tell the girls where he will like them to go. Do you want to stay here? Naruto was expecting a lot of things and believe it or not, he was also expecting the four girls to move. What he didn't expect was that they want to move in so soon. Yes Naruto-kun. Our families will just think it is a slumber party or they are too busy to care anyway. Hanada explained yet it seems the real reason was that they exhausted themselves helping Naruto clean his stuff from his former apartment. What it is the true reason is hidden deep in their minds. Yes Naruto-kun. Our families will just think it is a slumber party or they are too busy to care anyway. Hanada explained yet it seems the real reason was that they exhausted themselves helping Naruto clean his stuff from his former apartment. What it is the true reason is hidden deep in their minds. Despite everything, Naruto made dinner for the girls. They were in awe that Naruto can cook so well. I didn't grow this tall by just eating ramen, you know? Naruto said and the girls just giggled and nodded. Dessert caused them to drool like hungry puppies finally getting their meal. Naruto felt content having his first guests and actually keeping them happy. It was later in the evening but the girls were no feeling tired so Naruto gave them some novels that he read in his spare time and get this, some of them he actually wrote himself. Normally you will feel embarrassed and nervous of your first audience, especially the female population. But surprising, they all loved it and approved of the words. They even used a forbidden jutsu on Naruto, the puppy eye jutsu. They wanted to be the first buyers of this, amazing and epic, material. Naruto had to make that promise if he was to even look at anything else. But the other thing about that evening was the Sakura found a balcony in this house so she went onto it to get some fresh air and think about what happened ever since the wave mission. 
she found out that there was a seal on his head, near where the part of the brain that handles affections. It seemed to be imprisoning a feeling connected to a group of memories while replacing them with fake affections towards a boy that Sakura never loved. Sakura Chan. The said girl turned to see Naruto with his jacket off showing just his shirt that acted more like a muscle shirt. And even that was like another skin showing Sakura all of his muscles making her blush. Yet she regained her composure and went back to looking into the dusk sky that made Naruto more worried. Is there something wrong? You can tell me this you know. We are teammates. Sakura just nodded and began to cry which Naruto noticed and embraced Sakura from behind. It is okay Sakura-chan. Let it out. Looks like it is killing your beautiful eyes to contain it. Naruto spoke in a playful mood that helped Sakura a little until she turned in his arms and cried on Naruto's chest. A few minutes later, Sakura had calmed down as she halted her tears and looked up to Naruto's face. There, did that help? Sakura just smiled and nodded at how Naruto was willing to be patient and gentle to help her troubles, like he once said friends were for. Naruto-kun, I need you to look at a seal while I am still here. Sakura thought Naruto was clueless about what she said but instead he complied and saw what Sakura wanted him to see. He had an enraged look on his face, like when he found out that a jerk or bitch had tried to control one of his friends like a puppet purposely to ruin their lives. He then took his hand and placed it on the seal, thus turning it into harmless ink and Sakura herself felt like everything came to her or the real Sakura finally could control her own body. Her first act was to kiss Naruto square on the lips and he kissed her back. She then felt complete knowing she is given a chance to get back at her bitch mother and fix her mistakes the witch made her to do. Sakura was in the living room with the three other girls as they too listened to story behind the fangirl Sakura from the academy. They were at tears at the romance behind Naruto's devolution to her well-being and feelings even after the rejects thrown at him. What she said next was what challenged their new view on her. These happy and yet lustful thoughts raced through the minds of the girls as they approached their climax after two hours of intense penetration by the eight Narutos. They wanted to make Naruto conserve energy so he can position them in the bed so they can rest and sleep in his warm embrace. Lucky for them, Naruto noticed them and inwardly chuckled at his girl's childish but cute caring of his desires instead of their own. He signaled the clones to release as soon they all hit the womb. Once they did that, they all released their loads filling up the girl's baby maker as hitting the walls causing the girls to scream in ultimate pleasure and collapse towards Naruto. The blonde had just about the amount of energy to place the girls as followings, Ino on his right arm, Tenten on his left arm, Sakura and Hanada to lie on his chest which was big enough for both with room left to move around. Still Naruto had to do something else, he channeled chakra to his teeth and carefully bit in each of the girl's neck. Hanada, Sakura, Ino, Tent and all were feeling rather warm sleeping with Naruto until they noticed the absence of his warmth causing them to shiver and wake up to see that Naruto wasn't in the bed. They then smelled something cooking downstairs and decided that Naruto got up early to surprise them with breakfast. The girls smiled at how gentlemanly Naruto is now and they got into their clothes they left on the opposite side of the bed facing the door to the bathroom and went there. What they saw was what can change their lives forever. When the girls started to look themselves in the mirror, they noticed that a bite mark disguised as a blue fox in a crouching position. Like it was there to show that the girls were his and his alone. The girls didn't want to think wrongly so they saved the questions about the mark until after breakfast. They straightened their hair and clothes and washed the sleepy dust out of their eyes. They then found the stairs into the kitchen, where the yummy smell is coming from. The girls then saw, on the table, a feast for a breakfast and Naruto still cooking at the stove. He then turned to see his girls standing with a drop of drool dripping from their mouths. He smiled that at how happy the girls looked this morning after their intense make-out session juts last night. Morning girls. I see you are hungry because I wanted to welcome you after your first night in my new house. Naruto said in a gentle and friendly tone that brought the girls back to reality as they washed the drool away and said. Morning Naru Koi. Last night was our best. It felt weird even to the girls who said in unison. They looked at each other and started to try and break the circle while Naruto just looked smiling at how his girls were acting like little children. To him, it was cute and it was also keeping them from antagonizing one and another especially on the first morning sleeping in the same bed. He then got their attention so they can settle down for the breakfast. It was delicious to them and the best they ever tasted before. How did you learn to cook Naru kun Ino asked Naruto. The girls figured it was best to level down the affectionate names until it was a better time to become an actual couple. 
that left them waiting painfully with thoughts of moments like last night only more and maybe even longer. After the girls had their breakfast, they stood up to go to their homes to think about what is happening at the end of the week when Naruto stood in front of their way and signaled them to halt. They were confused by the request and gesture when Naruto placed his hand the spot where their necks connect to their right shoulder and they all felt like something was entering that spot and moving things around. The girls saw the artistic mark on their skin, but they also noticed a copy on Naruto's neck but have marks of female foxes less than half the size of the blue alpha around it. The girls then heard Naruto cough to gain their attention and it worked as they blushed in embarrassment. I understand your curiosity, I wanted to talk to you about the whole thing myself. Naruto said that erased any awkwardness in the girls' hearts. On each of your necks is a mate mark, my mark. Naruto said briefly and yet hid the meaning of a hundred statements for the girls as they realized that they mated like animals last night and yet they can't seem to regret it. I knew I should have told about it but I figured it will make no difference since I saw how willing you were to mate with me last night. Naruto smirked that the girls couldn't retort back so he got their attention to tell them the heavy part about the mark. After the horrible week of awaiting an even worse day of actually doing the stupid rule that lifted from meeting his little brother from Suna and lover from Taki, Naruto waited at the bridge while Sakura dose away on his chest and Sasuke was brooding about how he was to use his Sharingan to preserve his rightful place as Rookie of the Year. Naruto didn't pay any attention to the nonsense garbage and just focused on comforting one of his mates who tried to sleep after the awful experience yesterday. In return, Sasuke liked the idea of doing what he wanted to do without having to yell at a pink-haired girl asking for a date every five minutes. Then Kakashi appeared behind the couple giggling like a fangirl since his paradise ended the other day. It really annoyed his team, Naruto the most. He once burned every makeout book he had in his collection for trying to sample Sakura's chest for less. Sorry I am late, a black cat crossed my path and I had to take the long way around. Kakashi said one of his infamously terrible excuses for making his students for waiting for three hours, yet his team somehow got used to it because Naruto went on a date with Sakura while his clones kept the rest of his girls company during their training sessions while Sasuke got some training done. No you didn't because black cats don't hand out papers for the chunin exams. Naruto pointed out the sheets of paper sticking out of Kakashi's pockets. The gray-haired Jonin rubbed the back of his head sheepishly and took them out to show that they are indeed for the chunin exams. Each of the genin took one telling Kakashi that his team was up for it so he left for the Jonin lounge in the chunin stadium. No you didn't because black cats don't hand out papers for the chunin exams. Naruto pointed out the sheets of paper sticking out of Kakashi's pockets. The gray-haired Jonin rubbed the back of his head sheepishly and took them out to show that they are indeed for the Chunin exams. Each of the Jonin took one telling Kakashi that his team was up for it so he left for the Jonin lounge in the Chunin stadium. Naruto was having a walk with Sakura at his side after the horrible day last week and the meeting with Kakashi earlier, when he noticed that a rock with prefect edges and sides like a box with eye holes. Naruto sighed and Sakura was confused at her boyfriend's action as he wedged his foot under the rock and launched into the air to reveal three kids flying out onto the pavement in front of them. The first boy had black hair and looked almost ten years old. He wore an outsized scarf around his neck and a black cap to cover his hair. He also wore a grey shirt and black shorts with a sash at the waist. The other boy looked a little bored and dumpy compared to the overactive and carefree nature of the first boy. He wore glasses that made him look smart and snot hanging from his nose which was pretty disgusting. He was in a blue shirt plus a blue jacket and grey pants with also a cap on his hair. The lone girl of the trio looked like someone that can keep the boys under control but who was to keep her under control? Unlike the boys, she is revealing her hair in two broad ponytails that stuck pointing the sky. Alright Kono-kun. Who are your friends and why are you trying to spy on us? Naruto spoke in a frustrated tone that calmed down when Sakura placed her hand on his shoulder as if to say, they are just kids. The kids in question looked in awe that their new idol had a girl to calm him down and that he saw through their disguise, ring any bells? Sorry Antai san, but you promised to play with us but the Antai that came back, we couldn't be sure you were him so we did something only Naruto Antai will get right. Konohamaru was a boy who was named after the village that his grandfather rules as Hokage but had a flustering childhood as only his family call him by his name which was good but the poor boy couldn't get any friends because they would always call him, honorable grandson, 24-7 instead. That was until he meet Naruto who would just treat him like an ordinary boy instead of just the grandchild of the Hokage that he finally got a friend and an idol to look up to. So on Tai-san, 
Is the girl with the pink hair your girlfriend? Naruto knew that Konohamaru will insult his teammate so he had to find the boy first and pound some basic manners when it came to strangers in Konohamaru's case. Naruto smiled as Sakura did too and held her mate's arm closer, she as and we were on a date until it was ruined when a rock with perfect edges and eye holes decided to stalk us. Naruto said in a polite and then sarcastic tone that made the three kids relieved and drowned in shame that they had to blow a good time their boss was having. The man in question turned to Sakura and asked, We had fun until now so let's play with the kids, it can give them a head start in their future ninja careers. That question filled the trio with hope and excitement that leaked out through their eyes and Sakura noticed it. She smiled that her mate was good with kids and most girls would love to be in her shoes as most boys would wish to wear Naruto's shoes. She nodded which she thought was the best reply and the kids jumped into joy. After the boy revealed his name is Udon, the best student at math and the girl is Moegi, the loudest girl replacing Sakura in the academy, they played tag to improve speed and evasiveness skills when Konohamaru ran into something when he made a sharp left turn onto another street. Ouch. That hurt Gaki, means brat. The owner of the voice looked like something no short of a clown with all those stupid markings on his face and that he wears a cat suit with a bandaged bundle on his back. I better teach you to respect your elders. We have no time for this. We must get moving. The clown turned to a blonde girl with two ponytails on each side of her head. She wore desert clothing with much better taste than the clown boy and instead of a bundle, she had an oversized fan on her back. The boy seemed to ignore her and reach for the bundle on his back much to the fear of the girl. That is until he noticed that he cannot move his hand and that something was tickling down his neck. He turned to see the full blast of killer intent, key, from the blonde shinobi firmly grasping his arm and stabbing his neck with a sharpened dagger. What the hell? The boy muttered until the key increased and the dagger went in deeper causing him to freeze. The girl was also frozen as how the blonde sneaked on them and they didn't even feel the wind telling of his approach. You be a good boy Konkuro, and listen to your sister Tamari. Naruto spoke in an eerie tone that promised pain if otherwise and it shocked the two genin. How did you know our names? The clown boy now named Konkuro yelled in disbelief and false authority like he was trying to make it look like he is the oldest and in charge. Naruto just smiled, not saying a word. Then he let go of Konkuro and walked over him to approach sand floating in the air. Naruto then opened his arms and a certain red headed rushed into the blonde ninja's arms. It's nice to see you again, Gara Ni Chan. Naruto said as the red poked his face out of his chest with a childish pout. I wish you won't treat me like a little kid. I can take care of myself Naruto ni san. Gara whined that caused the two genin to shrink back. They knew that someone had helped their brother to accept them as his siblings but they felt ashamed that they were hostile to him instead. Sure. I will leave that to your older siblings. Naruto said in a tone that seemed to shine a burden spotlight on the two genin. Have they caused you any more trouble? Have they finally bonded with you? Naruto asked like a worried mother that really bothered Gara, who reassured his brother. You sound like a mom then a brother Naru Koi. It is nice to see that you haven't changed. Naruto turned and smiled to see a familiar face. One of his mates and fellow Jinchuriki, Fu. The two then embraced and kissed each other shameless. They didn't care. They haven't seen the other in five years so you would too. The couple would have enjoyed it more if wasn't for. Oi Dobi. The couple reluctantly broke their makeout session to see the emo brooder aka Sasuke Uchiha. Sakura was scowling, not by her mate kissing another girl. She saw the mate mark and knew that disliking the new girl will be a waste of blood and time so she smiled that love can travel a thousand miles to be together, she is still a romance lover even as a real kunoichi and not a fangirl. She was scowling that her least favorite teammate ruined a good moment, the couple deserved it according to the circumstances. Thanks a lot Teme for rudely interrupting our time. Naruto also wasn't pleased with his teammates actions as any of the other genin. So what is it? I saw you do that to many other girls behind their backs. If they belong to me, I would never cheat on them. You are a poor excuse for a boyfriend in my standards. Sasuke yelled as if he was accusing Naruto of doing something that never happened. The blonde didn't even stir. The girls in question said that it was okay because just being girlfriend and boyfriend was too boring so we don't have to follow your stupid standards Gen and Teme. Naruto revoked with very little respect left as the Uchiha had the nerve to tell him how to treat his girls right when the latter didn't have a relationship with any girl in his life. What did he know about treating a girlfriend? Was being like him the right way? I personally don't think so. 
Before anyone can speak, Kakashi appeared again. Remember the exams start this afternoon. Late and you will forfeit passage and have to wait for two more years. Kakashi then dispelled into smoke meaning that he sent a shadow clone because he was already occupied and was not allowed leaving early. Before anyone can speak, Kakashi appeared again. Remember the exams start this afternoon. Late and you will forfeit passage and have to wait for two more years. Kakashi then dispelled into smoke meaning that he sent a shadow clone because he was already occupied and was not allowed leaving early. Team 7 went into the stadium after successfully entering the Chunin exams, only to see that one team was already there begging at a pair of Genin to let them into a door that labeled 301. The room where Genin are supposed to be once the exams actually start. Naruto smiled at the sole female on the group as with Sakura who rushed and hugged the girl with hair buns revealing to be Tenten. Over the week as a mates to the same man, the girls got close to each other like sisters that each are in a separate team. Tenten smiled and hugged Sakura before Naruto walked to her and kissed her on the lips shortly. The others looked at the sight with mixed reactions. The one with huge eyebrows was screaming something like, flames of youth. The one with white eyes like Hanada's was sneering. Sasuke scoffed and turned away as if to tell he isn't interested in romance. The guard pair looked each other and nodded. Naruto dating the four girls from the academy wasn't a secret from the ones Naruto actually trusts. Actually, the ninja were glad that Naruto got rid of the mess called an outraged civilian council by bringing the professor back into action. Back to the present, the boy with white eyes put on a look of indifference, it is sick that the heiress to three clans and a girl who can't do more than throw knives around is attached to the dead last. After the stupid speech, Naruto looked to his girls. Girls. Anti-jerk technique. Those words put a creepy smile on the Kunoichi's faces as they walked towards the boy and kicked him where the sun doesn't shine. The boys, even Naruto, couldn't stop themselves from twitching for least as the white-eyed bastard fell to the ground. Sasuke thought he was defusing the situation by saying, Oi drop the stupid genjutsu at once, I have to get to the third floor. When those words were said, Naruto, his girls, and the real ninjas all groaned internally. Naruto then hit Sasuke on the back of his head, way to go Teme, now we have three times the amount of competition than necessary thanks to your loose lips. Our enemies love loose lips. I don't want weak rivals. I need to prove to the entire world that I am the only one worthy of Chunin status. Sasuke said in complete cockiness and idiocy that gave everyone a headache as they stop what they are doing and walk to the real third floor leaving Sasuke confused. He was the last Uchiha. He deserved the best respect. I can't believe I am saying this. When Naruto and his two girls, who are holding each of his arms, got to a room that looked like a training arena of sort, it was long until a voice yelled. Halt there. The three genin looked up to see the same boy with huge eyebrows and shining teeth was standing on railing on a catwalk. Tenten groaned that Naruto and Sakura caught. It's Lee again and he is going to double the number of eyes looking at us like on every mission. The weapon mistress knew her loud teammate too well and so did Sakura and Naruto of some sort since they often share their adventures and troubles on dates or hanging out. The former placed a comforting hand on Tenten's shoulder while the latter kissed her quickly but with passion on her cheek that made her giggle at the tickling sensation and affection that her mate never fails to show her. Is your name Sasuke Uchiha? Lee spoke to break the ice and speak of why he created all the unnecessary attention. Naruto and his mates just shrugged and continued but the black-haired emo refused to back down from a challenge. I am and you are. Sasuke replied politely. After the quick spar after the mission ended, Naruto managed to kick out a chuck of his teammates' arrogance out of his head but the lust to prove himself to powerful foes was stuck like glue, it was no use. I am the beautiful green beast of Konoha. Rock Lee. The boy with the big eyebrows then smiled with a tingle that nearly blinded everyone. Naruto knew about Lee from his mate who is the latter's teammate. If Sasuke fought, it will waste time and spell more trouble. Sasuke, we have no time for this. We have to move on or our teams are both disqualified. Naruto yelled to help his teammate see reality but he already heard the challenger call him a prodigy and they hit off but not before Naruto moved to each of them and drew a thousand markings into a single seal on the back of their necks in a single second and then rejoining his mates. Naruto-kun. Sakura asked worried and confused. Worried if it is something bad and confused at her mate's actions against the boys. Don't worry Sakura-chan and Tenten-chan. I will know if the jerks had their fun and I will see to that they will be present for the sake of your team, girls. 
Naruto assured them in a warm smile and comforting tone that did the trick as the girls got comfy in their mate's arms and walked with him to the entrance to the real room. When the three entered the intended room, they were bombarded by Kiba to them, it was more like a toddler having a fit since they all shared real key before on missions. They just found a place to settle until Naruto was tackled by a blonde blur. I missed you Naruto-kun. It turned out to be Ino as she had to be separate from her mate to be with her team. No one was offended as Naruto hugged his mate back and everyone smiled at the scene. It was the fact that a boy covered in bursts and scaring with another boy with no injuries appeared out of nowhere. They both were confused about it, everyone else was shocked, and the girls who knew Naruto had a good idea while the blonde in question just chuckled at the faces of everyone available. What did I tell you? It was a waste of time and a huge dent into your pride huh Sasuke? Naruto taunted the black-haired emo who just scoffed which even that was difficult with the pain coursing through his body. Naruto-kun. Naruto turned to see his fourth mate, Hanada embracing him much like how Ino did. Yeah dog boy? I didn't say it before as it would be random but instead of Naruto stealing Sasuke's first kiss, it was Kiba back in the academy days. This caused the girls to start attacking Kiba for making their Sasuke-kun look like he is gay. Troublesome. I don't know how you are expecting to score points with Hanada if you keep losing them. Now that was a tone that only a Konoha ninja would recognize and fortunately for Naruto, he was. The blonde turned to see two of his very few childhood friends. Rejects like him in the academy, Choji and Shikamaru. Well at least that we all are together on this one. Shikamaru was a lazy but smart boy to everyone but Naruto felt sorry for the Nara and drilled some humility into his head which worked to some extent. Be quiet you two. An unfamiliar voice got the Konoha Genin's attention to see someone that looks like he is in his twenties. He wore glasses that seemed to make him smarter. He also wore a white shirt under a black jacket with grey pants. If you were any more noisily, you gain the wrong attention especially from the team over there. The man pointed to the group of Genin each wearing a headband with a music note on it. And who are you? Naruto asked politely but deep inside his head, the blonde had a good idea who was the man he was talking to. Kabuto personal medic to Orochimaru the snake sage. Naruto detected the strong scent of snakes all over the man's body along with herbs and medicine. Sorry about my manners. My name is Kabuto and I am what you may call your senior genin. Kabuto scratched his head sheepishly. Have you taken the exams before Kabuto-san? Hanada asked while trying to escape the lustful gazes of her brash teammate. Yes, this is my seventh. Kabuto admitted that everyone looked sorry for him but they knew better that no one takes the exams for six times until today. Wow you must really suck. Kiba rudely replied. Hey these exams are tough, only few genins pass, some genin never pass and must wait for next time and yet most genin don't ever survive the exams at all. They are that dangerous. Kabuto warned them but they knew that if Kabuto was worse than them, he wouldn't even be here. That tells them that he is strong, too strong to be a genin. If you like, I can give you some forethought. This confused the ninjas so they all didn't say a word. My business is that I can create ninja cards. They store information on genin who are participating in the exams this year including their origin, history and skill level. This really got Sasuke's attention as he hoped to learn about his rivals so he could vanquish them all. Okay. Give me the cards for Gara from Suna, Rock Lee from Konoha, and Naruto Uzumaki from Konoha. This brought scowls on many faces as the rookie of the year buying info that he could learn himself on the battlefield, like he was too scared to learn. You know their names huh? This is easier than I thought. Kabuto was interrupted from his thoughts when he noticed that his deck of ninja cards were absent and looked for them, he found the deck in Naruto's hand. Thank you Kabuto-san. Naruto then caused the card deck to engulf in flames, for nothing. Hey what is your problem Dobi? Kiba wasn't happy about Naruto's actions. He was hoping that if Naruto's ninja history was terrible, Hanada will leave Naruto and go to him. Ninja entitled to their own secrets, not show them off when there could have been ears belonging to people who can use our own private info as a weapon against us. Naruto retorted making much of the genin present smile at the respect Naruto is showing for them even the foreign ninja. If you are so anxious to see my stuff, then be patient because the exams will finally start about. Dot now. As soon as Naruto finished his sentence, a cloud of smoke appeared in the room revealing a scarred man wearing a cap with the Konoha symbol engraved in a metal plate on the forehead area. He was wearing a Jonin suit with black cloak that hides most of his body. Alright you maggots. 
You are now allowed to enter the room now move. They winced at the volume of the voice and obeyed. The room in question was like the classrooms in the academy complete with separate desks and blackboard but also with Chunin each sitting in a chair facing away from the windows that reveal how the village looks from the room. Naruto and his girls knew that if teammates sit next to each other, it will raise suspicion and bad attention. They had enough of it today already. So Naruto sat in one chair while Tenten and Hanada sit on either side while Ino sat behind him and Sakura sat in front of him. Okay maggots, welcome to the first exam, the proctor announced. Ninja entitled to their own secrets, not show them off when there could have been ears belonging to people who can use our own private info as a weapon against us. Naruto retorted making much of the genin present smile at the respect Naruto is showing for them even the foreign ninja. If you are so anxious to see my stuff, then be patient because the exams will finally start about. Dot now. As soon as Naruto finished his sentence, a cloud of smoke appeared in the room revealing a scarred man wearing a cap with the Konoha symbol engraved in a metal plate on the forehead area. He was wearing a Jonin suit with black cloak that hides most of his body. All right you maggots. You are now allowed to enter the room now move. They winced at the volume of the voice and obeyed. The room in question was like the classrooms in the academy complete with separate desks and blackboard but also with Chunin each sitting in a chair facing away from the windows that reveal how the village looks from the room. Naruto and his girls knew that if teammates sit next to each other, it will raise suspicion and bad attention. They had enough of it today already. So Naruto sat in one chair while Tenten and Hanada sit on either side while Ino sat behind him and Sakura sat in front of him. Okay maggots, welcome to the first exam, the proctor announced. Kuranai, who is still crossed from her Hokage's perverted rule about improving teamwork but also curious at how Hanada isn't pregnant or even dazed at the make session that should have been classified as first class rape if it wasn't legal, is now walking with her fellow Jonin while waiting for their Jenin to pass the first exam. No one will try to talk to the Genjutsu mistress as she was so angry that she was tempted to place a year-long Genjutsu over every old man or pervert or both. So the Jonin had their conversations. So the proctor for the first exam this year is Ibiki isn't he? One Jonin started one that got Kuranai's attention as she didn't recognize the name. Who? The other Jonin made an internal sigh of relief when they heard no malice of any sort in her tone. Asuma felt like he should answer her, that is right. You haven't been a Jonin for a year yet. Ibiki Morino is known among us as the mind sadist. He doesn't torture by physical means but by mental. He is the head of the T&I, torture and interrogation department, in the village. Kuranai was now worried. Worried about her team and more especially Hanada as Shino will be missed but no one will notice a character like Kiba if he was done in by Ibiki. She then noticed that Asuma hasn't done anything to comfort her and any of the other Jonin hadn't done anything better. She became jealous at how her adoptive daughter had a brave and amazing boyfriend, someone to treat her right and can always be there for her even when she has a fit. It almost made her cry. Back inside the exam room, Naruto and his team along with his mate were told that the exam is to answer 10 questions with 9 on a sheet of paper and the 10th one saved for last. The rules are that if they are caught cheating 5 times, it costs their entry which says that if a team member fails, the whole team does. This of course put everyone on tension. Yet, they all are cheating in their own ways. Tenten is using mirrors on the only lamp to reflect her answers and other answers to her mate and teammate. Gara is using his third eye to peek on other tests. The mummy Genin was listening to the patterns of scratching. Shino was listening to his insects. Kiba was listening to his dog partner and Ino was using her clan jutsu while making everyone think she was asleep. Okay maggots. Time for the tenth question. Ibiki roared to grab the Genin's attention and if worked since all of them were stopping at whatever question they were working on. They were on end as to what the final question is and why they didn't place it on the test sheet. Now pay attention because I won't repeat myself. Ibiki roared at the Genin who are more nervous about the final question as every second passes and if more yelling is sent their way. If you feel unwilling to answer the final question, leave at once to save face. This really shocked the ninjas. But you said that if we leave, we cannot hope to become Chunin, a random Genin yelled that didn't phase the proctor. I never gave permission to speak. Number 32, number 46, number 25. Get out of the room at once for speaking out of turn. Ibiki ordered as the fellow proctors struggled to escort the Genin numbered as such which luckily weren't Naruto and any of his former classmates. Now if any of you want to escape with your life and fail, get out. 
Ibiki then noticed that none of the genin were focusing on his treats but on how a blonde boy who isn't even amused by what is happening. Naruto. Think we are playing games here Uzumaki. Ibiki couldn't believe he had to go with more force and actually move from his spot to shove his face into Naruto's but still the blonde didn't move a muscle. Actually I was wondering how you became a tokabetsu janin, special janin, in the field of tea and I with such petty words. If I do make the wrong choice and be forbidden from becoming chunin, I will achieve my dreams in another way. I never go back on my word and I don't run away from my dreams. That is my nindo, ninja way. Naruto's speech of calmness and not giving up had caused everyone who was willing to leave to sit securely in their seats. That Uzumaki Gaki had completely diffused my aura of uneasiness without difficulty. He is sure to make us veterans proud. All right Gaki, you have sealed the fate of everyone in this room and you. Pass. What? What about the tenth question? We never learned what it was. Were the basics of the confusion and mayhem until the air was filled something calm and smoothing that everyone felt and were surprised too since their muscles and heart slowed down a notch that spared everyone of deafness and heart attack. They looked for the source at the proctors but they show signs that they are looking too. It turned out to be Naruto. Whatever or not we should leave was the tenth question. Naruto explained that got everyone's attention including Ibiki with his team of interrogators. In our field of work, information can save, improve the lives of others but it can also ruin or even end the lives of either the innocent or guilty. This whole exam was to see if we are able to gather information in a tight packed location with sharp eyes and ears waiting to cut and kill us. The final question was like a situation in which we are left to either gain info that can save millions or abandon it for the lives of your own comrades. A difficult choice in which neither cleverness nor cunning can pull us out of the hot pot. We passed because ninjas are adults and adults take their problems and hard choices head on instead of running away from them. Basically, a staying here was like facing danger we don't know in the face and telling it to bring it on. That is how it works in the world of ninja. Everyone was left speechless as Naruto had the first exam figured out and left no one confused as to how everyone left past. Ibiki himself was impressed but he was brought out of his musings when the window directly to his right broke and a black ball rushed inside to expand revealing a sign with the kanji for, the single and sexy snake mistress, Anko Mitarashi, within the black ball of fabric, there seemed to be a young woman. She had purple hair and wore a brown trench coat with surprisingly a fishnet shirt with no underwear beneath at all. All right brats I am, the single and sexy snake mistress, Anko Mitarashi. Naruto interrupted her intro. We can read you know and why did you have to ruin a perfectly good mood that Ibiki-san was enjoying. The woman face faulted. Damn brat, you blew my entrance. Like you blew your own schedule by being way early, Mitarashi-san, so what is the big deal? Naruto retorted that managed to keep the self-proclaimed snake mistress quiet. The genin were snickering at how Naruto did the deed. As for Ibiki, he was chuckling and remembering at how he tried to keep Anko from being too early and Naruto did that in a few minutes. Anko then acted like she was counting something and turned to Ibiki with an assumed face, there are only 26 teams left, that means 78 brats still in the exams, you must be losing your touch old man. This year has a special bunch, especially the blonde boy over there. Ibiki explained while pointing at Naruto making the latter feel appreciated by his fellow genin for securing their place in the exams and also special because who wouldn't after being praised by someone of a well-known title. Anyway brats. Training ground 44. Don't be late. Anko tried to gather her composure and disappeared in a blur. Everyone was still giggling because somehow, they were feeling like little kids on the road to the candy store. Naruto gathered up his mates and two disappeared in a blur with every one of the genins disappearing as well. What no one noticed was there was writing at the base of their feet each originating from Naruto. After the genin departed, Ibiki collected the test papers to see a note on Naruto's, it said. Hey Scarface, among the genin, there is one named Kabuto who makes cards on ninjas. I saw those cards myself. There have too much info for any genin to come across. He is a spy that stinks more of snakes than Anko-san. He could be working for Orochimaru whom I warned the old man of a possible invasion during the finals in these exams. Spread the word to the genin but keep it a secret considering that greenhorns like ourselves have loose lips, the favorite source of info for our enemies. From Naruto Uzumaki the San Senin. Ibiki didn't know why a greenhorn would give himself a title so soon in his career but his blurred out of the room to follow what the note said and keep a closer eye on this Kabuto character. 
From Naruto Uzumaki, the Sans Senen, Triple Sage. Ibiki didn't know why a greenhorn would give himself a title so soon in his career but his blurred out of the room to follow what the note said and keep a closer eye on this Kabuto character. Okay brats, Anko started as she finished counting the genin left from the room. Not one turned and left. Welcome to training ground 42 or what it is commonly called, the forest of death. That proclaim got a lot of the genin nervous but the Jinchuriki had seen and heard scarcer and never back down so they were not budging. Anko happened to notice Naruto do this and threw a kanai at the blonde with the intent to scare and scar but instead Naruto caught it and sent it back and nicked the proctor's cheek in the same second. That will explain why she didn't notice the blonde dripping down her face and neck. She was too busy trying to scare Naruto by placing a spare kanai to his neck and bombard him with ki. If she would have noticed that Naruto was no with his mates, she would have seen that it was a clone made out of explosive notes. She panicked and tried to get away on account she was slipping, tripping and sliding through the mud until she noticed there was no screaming. Hey Naruto-kun. What is wrong with the proctor? Anko heard one of the genin ask and noticed that there was no trace of an explosion, just a trail of mud that she was skidding through like a fool. She was one for not seeing that she fell for a genjutsu. Everyone else was trying to hold in a snicker at how idiotic the snake mistress was acting. Anko herself was burning up with rage and humiliation at how she let a fresh greenhorn outwit her with such a simple illusion. She dusted herself and got back into position, in front a pair of gates. Anko then took out two scrolls while a couple of chunin appeared to her side with a pile in each arms. Naruto noticed that the scroll in Anko's left hand had the kanji for heaven and the one in the right hand had the kanji for, earth. Now the rules of the second exam, Anko started to explain and everyone was playing attention to look for loopholes to jumpstart them to the third exam. In the training ground 42, there is a tower directly in the middle. Picture the area as a circle with a dot in the vortex, that is your destination. Everyone was quiet but also writing it down mentally. You have five days and five days max to reach the tower. If your team doesn't make it there by the time, they are disqualified. The genin jotted it down thinking that a walk through the woods would be hard, but Anko was getting to the best part, inside the area are beasts like you never seen and they love to attack easy prey, especially at night. If a teammate dies either to the conditions or is eaten, the remaining members are out of the exams. But what do we do for food? Choji asks scared by the danger. You have plenty of herbs or game to hunt while you trek through the forest. You will also have to hunt yourselves. Anko said that really scared the genin. See the scrolls in my hands? Anko asked and everyone nodded. Each team will be given either a heaven scroll or an earth scroll. Anko started and the genin listened. You see, if you want to pass the second exam to move on to the third exam, you team will have to complete the pair. If the team should open their own before making to the tower, they will be disqualified. Anko finished explaining. Excuse me Anko-san. Naruto said to get the proctor's attention. If our original scroll or the one we retrieve from an enemy team gets destroyed, do we get disqualified? Everyone was awestruck. It was a one point about the rules for the second exam. Then you will have to steal another scroll from another team because if your team is missing the other scroll at the tower, your team can progress to the third exam. Anko tried to quell the uproar about the loophole but she could even handle her own stress. Now the last thing to do before starting the second exam is to write your names on here. Anko said handing out papers for everyone. What are these for? A random genin asked. If any of you die in the forest, then we can't be pressed charges and all funeral expenses are paid. Anko answered that spooked everyone out about the dying in the forest, bit. All right enough with the lectures brats, it is time to enter the forest and my only advice is this, don't get killed. The genin looked at each other as if for the last time and Naruto sent his lovers to their respected teams. Each team got one of the scrolls at random and looked at them. Naruto's team got an earth scroll. That meant for them to find a heaven scroll and make it to the tower. So what is the plan? Sakura asked her two teammates as they walked from the entrance. Sasuke wanted to get a head start of the others but Naruto insisted that they treat the exam like a marathon, jug to warm up and dash to the finish line. He also said that it will make any predators that live there or any enemies trying to kill them edgy. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. Naruto created an army of a hundred shadow clones that took off in multiple directions. Now we can find the route to the tower and keep it in mind when we find the remaining scroll. Naruto explained his action. Let's just do it and get to the tower. 
I want to train to sharpen my skills so I can show that I can kill my brother. Sasuke could do nothing but brood and rant about killing his only brother. This started to be a bother to his teammates so they picked up the pace and found themselves hopping on the tree branches. Then they found a clearing where Naruto stopped causing his team to do the same. What now Dobi? Just nature calling Teme. Naruto jumped into a nearby bush leaving Sakura with Sasuke who looked to see if someone was looking and approached his female teammate. Say Sakura, the pink-haired Kunoichi was instantly on guard but learning with Naruto had taught her how to hide it well as Sasuke never even saw a trance of Sakura's hesitation. After the exams, can we go on a date? That question stirred up a cauldron of emotions both good and bad yet none of the good ones were about Sasuke. This is because Sakura remembering Sasuke say that he would only marry girls who will follow his so he can use them as meat shields or be his servants as well as baby factories. Sakura was disgusted but before he could tell anyone, she was ambushed and knocked out, that was when the Sakura who was born was thought to be lost forever and replaced with the Sakura that was created to take over the girl's body. Sorry Sasuke but I am perfectly happy with Naruto and it will be a cold day in August when I leave him for scum like you. Sakura rejected more harsh than she was forced to shoot down Naruto back in the academy. But it did double the damage since the Uchiha knew that ever since Sakura switched sights from him to Naruto, she was growing in skills like a weed on a growth spurt, quick and unexpected. And Sasuke doesn't like it when fresh fish covered in old seaweed become out of his reach, ironic since he felt like the happiest person around when he two worst fan girls finally decided to leave him alone but then he wanted them back. Now listen bit, Sasuke was about to finish a rude retort when a huge gust of wind appeared out of nowhere and launched both him and Sakura away. They felt like they were in a whirlpool and couldn't tell which way is up when Sakura was gently caught by arm holding her bride style causing her to blush yet Sasuke didn't have so smooth as another arm only touched his leg which didn't stop him from being grazed by branches and bark until they all came to a complete stop revealing the owner of both arms to be the blonde we all know. Naruto Kun Sakura was delighted to be rescued by her mate by was hushed reminding her about the unknown attacker. That was when they got their answer when Akunoichi with the musical note headband came out in front of them and unleashed her key. Sakura was trained to at least stand against the natural force which was the minimal for anyone to face a user of key while Sasuke only felt this from when the wave mission started to go south for the worst. You know. You have fooled everyone but the only thing that slips through my eyes are arrogance and insanity which don't even come close to fit you disgusting boy fucking snake bastard Orochimaru. Naruto was determined to bring the snake out of it hiding hole. He got his wish when the woman hissed and started to pull off her skin to reveal a man with snake-like features with pale skin wearing a light blue battle robe. You are as disrespectful as you are observant. Orochimaru muttered, I will have to shut you mouths for good but not before. The hubby Senen suddenly stretched his neck like a snake and rocked towards Sasuke. He was only a few inches when he felt like his body was about to explode and retreated back into shed it like snake skin. Just like a snake to abandon your dying host after and after. Naruto stated as he pricked at the palm on his right hand and dipped his left three fingers in it and then on three seal matrixes on his right arm. Mitsu Kuchios. Tetsu Kyojin. Naruto yelled when three clouds of smoke burst out of nowhere. Sasuke and Sakura were shocked to notice the ground they were standing on felt more like a metal plate and sure enough, each one of Team 7 is standing on a puppet resembling a snake, a toad and a slug all made of iron. Let's play Orochimaru, Senen style. I do hope Naruto-kun knows what he is doing. Sakura was worrying herself while she is looking out a porthole which showed her the battle that is going on. As we zoom out, we see that Sakura is watching from the metal toad that seemed to be hiding in the earth a good distance from the fighting and still get a good view. Inside in the iron creature seemed to be five chambers, the biggest contained the tongue laced with seals that allowed it to grab the two genin with ease, two middle chambers that were best suited for sleep and eat, and then the two remaining chambers were good for observing and for firing jutsu. If you are wondering why Sasuke isn't trying to steal Sakura's heart from behind Naruto's back, the blonde took care of that and knocked out right when Naruto had his metal toad contain his teammates. Of course, Naruto was the one who threw the Senban into the Uchiha's neck, it was Sakura who developed the formula the needles were coated in, Naruto trusted his mate's work. And that if Sasuke awakens earlier, Sakura can always hit him full strength, 
The metal that makes up the toad is laced with seals that both absorb impacts either made of chakra or pure strength. Now back to the fight. Naruto was using a clone to act his metal snakes since Orochimaru had enough time to summon of his snakes that made him infamous. As for the clone creator with blonde hair, he was engaged in a fierce taijutsu duel with the snake summoner himself. Orochimaru was having difficult trouble finding out how a greenhorn was able to match his speed and strength as well as his snake fist style. I will admit it brat, Orochimaru spoke in a panting tone, you sure are annoying. Naruto hit a smirk that he saw Orochimaru finally lost his cool and started to fight like an angry brawler rather than a senin. Looks like I am closer than taking his place as the strongest of the three sages of leaf. Naruto then noticed that Orochimaru's neck started to bulge, that was when Naruto firmly grasped the neck causing whatever inside to stay like that. This of course caused Orochimaru to wither and silently scream in pain. If anyone was quick with their eyes, they would have saw that Naruto did more than cause the snake senin pain by grabbing his neck. Reitsum, Naruto stabbed the sage in the chest with a hand coated in sharp lightning. Naruto then removed his hand, now covered in snake blood, from the bleeding chest of Orochimaru and saw that the snake shed its skin again. Now that was impressive brat, you got the idea from Kakashi and made it your own fox claws huh? Orochimaru tried to gloat but Naruto struck in the chest again causing him to lose blood from the mouth. What is going on? Why can't I shed skins? Orochimaru tried to escape by burrowing through the ground but for some reason he couldn't then notice that he saw birds but couldn't hear them. What did you do brat? Naruto just stood there smirking as Orochimaru finally pieced it together but then screamed like a dying man only seconds from their doom. Naruto knew that his mate was looking but if he was going to trust her as a ninja, he would also count on her to take the experience slowly and easy as it is the only way to recover. As to what is going on inside, Orochimaru couldn't see the seals until flesh-eating acid shoot out in all directions, manly towards the snake ninja. He managed to dodge one stream to see that one seal caught the acid and stored it again. Now the snake sage couldn't burrow through whatever is blocking him and he can't outrun the acid because there was a limitless supply. Sakura saw that the metal slug was hiding in the ground that the missing nin was trying to use in order to escape. She knew from what her mate told her that slugs emit a natural acid suited for melting stone and devour flesh and bones. It was probably what was the metal slug as primary used for. Then the metal toad expelled her from the observation chamber and into Naruto's arms to boot. As Sakura saw that the metal toad had barfed Sasuke out and became sealed into Naruto's right shoulder seals, she felt both embarrassed and safe too knowing that the one who was after them was destroyed. It is exactly that was what on her mind and also a question she wanted answered. How was it that you defeated a cage level ninja so easily Narukoi? Naruto sighed as he lifted Sasuke unceremoniously over his shoulder and gently but firmly grasped his mate's hand with his own and began to walk towards the tower. He retrieved a heaven scroll from Orochimaru before the fight. He also remembered when one of his shadow clones found a path from his location to the tower and that other clones had either been slain or told the others where to go. Sakura chan, Naruto said, when they say that deception or the lack of knowledge on an enemy can be a ninja's sharpest kunai or strongest shield, they are not kidding around, if Orochimaru knew how I fought back there, I would have been killed. He will know what is coming and he can find a way to end my life. It's that simple, Sakura-chan. Sakura just nodded and gave in to her mate's warmth with her hand on his shoulder. He just smiled at how his mate would still be so carefree in such an environment and such burden on her own shoulders. He just went on walking towards the tower, there the third exam waits to begin. Sakura just nodded and gave in to her mate's warmth with her hand on his shoulder. He just smiled at how his mate would still be so carefree in such an environment and such burden on her own shoulders. He just went on walking towards the tower, there the third exam waits to begin. At the tower in the middle of training ground 42, Team 7 in all of its pieces walked into a room with a catwalk like in the building where the first exam was held. They then noticed that a picture with kanji on it was on the facing wall yet close to the ceiling than the ground. Naru Koi, Sakura wanted to break the silence, Orochimaru is a missing nin and a senin, why would he waste his time with us genin on our first time in the chunin exams? He seemed to be after Sasuke. 
Yes because people like him have spies practically everywhere and from them he learned that the Tem has awakened his Sharingan which can allow him to copy every technique there is in the ninja world. He would be the ultimate ninja, truly invincible and immortal. Naruto replied, yet when he went after Itachi for his Sharingan, Orochimaru only got his right hand severed and paralyzed easily. So Orochimaru went after easier prey, our own teammate. Then we should be safe considering you slain the snake Senen. Sakura tried to make a point but, Orochimaru is a cunning Senen, he loves to make his enemies think he was kill able only to come back to backstab them. Naruto brought up the worrisome details reluctantly. Instead of worrying ourselves to death, let's solve the riddle up there. Naruto was right, the kanji on the board was a riddle. It said, if you lack in earth, run into the fields and search for opportunities. If you lack in heaven, improve your mind and extend your vision. If you lack in both, you are doomed to fail. If you lack in none, you are always on the right path. Here is in Serutobi, Sandame Hokage no Konoha. What do you suppose it means by earth and heaven? Sakura asked but before Naruto can speak. You can only ask yourself Haruno-san, because not one of us understands it either. The two genin turned to see Team 9, Team 8, Team 10 and the Suna team with everyone in it standing beyond the riddle board. It really surprised everyone was that five teams including Team 7 themselves have arrived at the tower at the same time, Naruto brittle himself for underestimating his own comrades and friends. Dobi, why did you have to get Hinata-chan's hopes up with that blasted clone? I was just about to ask her out on a date with a real man when you sent a cage bunchin to tell us where to go. Why did you do that? That is cheating. Kiba clearly doesn't know how to contain himself. It is called helping comrades Kiba, Naruto said causally that really pressed the dog breath's buttons even deeper, you sound like we are in a war with each other in these exams. If the other villages find out that we can't even work as a team, we will be in real hot water if that is what you are worried about. Everyone smiled at the fact that Naruto was able to keep Kiba quiet. Now they went to the riddle. Did they say that if a team doesn't have a pair of the scrolls, they can't progress? Shikamaru asked. That got everyone thinking and each team took out their scrolls out, it said that if we have both, earth, and, heaven, then we are on the right path, like the path towards the third exam. Let's open them. When the scrolls were opened, there was writing with the kanji for, human, drew in a circle out of the letters. Then Naruto threw his scrolls into a, X, formation that caused everyone to the do the same and there came an explosion of smoke that nearly filled the whole room. When the smoke lifted, there was a group of Chunin and Janin talking, obviously not aware that they have been summoned in the middle of their conversations by the Genin. And then they, what is going on? One of the Chunin finally noticed the change in surroundings and alerted the others that five Genin teams have arrived and successfully reached the tower. One of them had a horizontal scar between his eyes and nose, and he went to Team 7. What happened to Sasuke? Thankfully no one was offended considering that Sasuke was the odd one out because he is knocked out while everyone had nicks and scratches and dirt from trekking through a harsh forest. My team was ambushed by Orochimaru. Naruto said plainly that confused the genin but shocked the chunin and janin. Three genin were attacked by an S-rank criminal and they are still alive. They then took Sasuke into their arms into the hospital ward. The genin were told that they had four days to wait in the tower rooms until the third exam started. In the lounge where the genin can hang out, Naruto was reading a book while his mates were washing up after their experience in the forest and also sharing how they found the remaining scroll to make their own pairs. It was mostly stolen or savaged from dead teams. Naru kun Now that was a voice that belonged to a girl that Naruto knows, he turns to see Fu with her own team. The one to her left was a woman with black hair and green hair. She wore a brown t-shirt under a jacket with fireball and birds on fire patterns and black trench pants with ninja sandals on her feet. She seemed to wear gloves with a strange drawing on the palms that looked like flames. Fu's other companion was a boy with a hideous smirk on his face and had white hair and red eyes. He wore a green shirt and a jacket that matched his hair perfectly, red pants with holy hound patterns since they looked pure and yet impure, and gray boots instead of sandals. This is the boy you refused to become my fiancé for. Naruto knew that the boy was filled with arrogance at first glance, hey buddy. The boy then yelled at him like a whining baby. What is it? 
Naruto couldn't stand boys like this spoiled brat enough to show any respect. I can see that you are weak and that our fool of a leader made the wrong choice to engage you to Fu Chan. Well if we fight, there wouldn't be any of you left. Then Fu will be free from your curse. What kind of person will listen to a self-centered boy like that until Naruto instantly flicked a Sanban out of his pocket into the neck of the spoiled brat, effectively silencing him? Sorry for stirring up a racket and embarrassment for your team. Naruto bowed and apologized to which the tacky team politely refused it. Say miss, I know Fu Chan as you already seen but I don't think we met before. Quote. Of course, my name is Narumi and know that is my full name. It is all I ever knew. The woman now named Narumi answered. Another orphan. Join the club, we got cookies. Naruto joked that made Narumi and Fu giggle. Naru kun, Fu said, can I sleep with you? Now, Naruto isn't the one confused or frightened as it will be torture to not sleep with someone who enjoys it for so long yet Narumi wasn't into the whole thing fully. Fu Chan, come on Narumi san, she hadn't done it in years. Naruto was confident that Narumi might understand. I know, you told me in private as she didn't want to antagonize the jerk on the first day as a genin team. Narumi reassured the blonde ninja, but with ears on every wall, why did you say that so causally? I see that you don't want anything terrible to happen when it comes to Kunoichi who understands your loneliness. Naruto said that smooth in the atmosphere, all I got to say is to allow Fu to do the same. Naruto chuckled at their confusion, Fu is also an orphan like you, and she also wants someone to call sister so she probably wants you to see how she appreciates your concern. Sisters look after each other, that the big rule to live by. Understand, instead of words spoken. Naruto got an instant hug by a happy Fu. Thank you Naru-kun, you just have this wonderful gift, being able to see our feelings behind our actions and voices. I am happy to be in love with you. Naruto smiled and hugged Fu back when they heard an, ah. It didn't seem to come from Narumi so they turned to see the Jonin in awe at the couple's interaction, some of them felt happy for the youngsters in love. Some felt they were lucky to have such happiness at such a young age while others were indifferent or jealous as to how Naruto was able to weave his way into everyone he waves or say, hello, too. You were so cute, Kurenai Yuhi yelled but Naruto clearly saw sadness and self-conflict behind the awe in her eyes. He also knew that it was because she finally got into a relationship yet her boyfriend makes hanging out almost unbearable because of his smoking habits. Speaking of the devil, Asuma Sarutobi was making coughing noises by those who were itchy in their eyes in his flumes. Naruto gently broke up the hug in order to save his mate from further humiliation. He then walked over to Kurenai. You are Kurenai Yuhi, the Genjutsu mistress? Naruto asked. Why yes, am I that famous? Sure and I heard from Hanada-chan that you act like her mother as well as her teach right. Naruto once again asked and Kurenai nodded making Naruto smile. It was the last part that is a dozy. It must be terrible having a boyfriend who will buy cigarettes when he could be buying you lunch or jewelry. Or having to walk on the other side of a road when they guys walk huh. This really changed the atmosphere and it seemed to come from Asuma himself. If you are not happy with how I date then you can't do a thing about it. Asuma said sternly that made Naruto frown, losing his smile. And what gave you permission to make the air uncomfortable for Kurenai sensei or never be there when she is down? And why do you smoke anyways? Naruto asked for the female Jonin sake. It is the only thing that helps me relax. That was the last straw of Naruto's patience as he suddenly scratched the smoke stick out of the Sarutobi's mouth, grabbed the box found in the Jonin's right leg pocket to burn it in front of him and for the final. He grasped Asuma's hands to be poked with his knuckle knives while his neck being held by a firm hand right in front of the wall behind him. Are you saying that being around Kurenai sensei is not relaxing? Naruto asked in a voice that meant pain if you give the wrong answer. The Jonin were stalked but not as much as Kurenai after hearing that her boyfriend unknowingly admitted that he never felt relaxed at all around her, it is a heartbreaker. Uh, what don't you mind your own business? Asuma surely didn't know what he is saying is pushing someone's buttons that is going to trigger a fierce temper of a, real alpha, when someone was harming his mate either physically or emotionally. Hanada-chan is one of my girlfriends that your father had allowed me to date along with a few others, 
Kurenai sensei is someone closest to a mother so she is hurting on the inside so if Hanada chan and I don't let fair women stay heartbroken. I know I can't stop them from being here broken but keeping them that way is what only cowards and bastards do. Naruto yelled his reasoning, if I find out that Kurenai sensei is feeling appreciated or loved, I will have to take matters into my own hands and I know your father never did anything close to this when he dated your mother. If you are the Hokage's son, you will try better to follow his example, it caused you to be born didn't it? Naruto released Asuma to let him reflect silently and gently took the heartbroken Kurenai and heavy-hearted Fu into the room he agreed to share with the rest of his mates. As for the rest of the Jonin and Narumi, they were not idiots and they knew that Naruto can take care of this so they left for their own activities. Not one of them even spot a look towards the mentally attacked Sarutobi as he sat there with no strength in his legs to think about how he was tormenting his girlfriend who owned him for saving her from an attempted rape by some enemy ninja. If he was to even say, good morning, to her, he may have straightened things out and smoothed the tension he unleashed after months of it building up. Now, in Naruto's room, Kurenai was crying away at how her boyfriend was making her relationship unbearable. She thought he was cool and can think of her above smoking, yet Asuma did just the reverse. Kurenai couldn't understand how Asuma can be so blunt when it comes to her feelings compared to his smoking. Shochu, strong oh sake, Kurenai sensei. The red-eyed Jonin looked up to see the blonde that opened her eyes to her torment. Despite her sadness, she was warm after seeing Naruto's famous, fox smile. Sure Naruto-san, how did you know it was my favorite? Kurenai was overjoyed that she was allowed to enjoy her favorite food at a time like this. Silly girl, your student is one of my mates so I hear a lot about you from her. Naruto answered that got Kurenai intrigued. Mate, yes, I figure if Dog Breath aka Kiba finds out that no one is stopping him from roughing up Hinata-chan and get her heavy with his pups. Kurenai felt down that she wasn't able to get rid of Kiba's brashness that made the Naruto from the academy look calm. So I invited her to my new house to try and comfort her when she asked to be my mate, someone who can never hope to cheat on me even if she was raped. I don't like that part of life but the only thing I can do is lighten it. Kurenai was amazed at how mature Naruto has become, she thought he was still childish at his age, but she was proven wrong. Where are Hinata and my team now? Hinata said she was taking a bath with the other girls, Shino just went to the room reserved for him and as for dog breath his companion Akamaru dragged him into the same room to doze off until the third exam starts. Kurenai took a breath of relief that her team made it to the final part of the exams. I must say, Akamaru isn't too bad. I almost thought Kiba was the pet, and Akamaru was the owner. Naruto joked that made Kurenai laugh, she couldn't feel her sadness anymore. Thanks Naruto-kun, I needed that. No problem, you are a treasure to Hinata-chan. Kurenai felt warm and relaxed in her heart that she was someone important to her student, after all, Hinata was like a daughter to her. Kurenai sensei, Kurenai san, Naruto, Fu and Kurenai looked to see Hinata with Sakura, Ino and Tenten all dressed with hair still wet from the bath, Naruto didn't mind, to him it made the girls look more beautiful with their hair down like that. Hey girls, how was the bath? It was fine, Naru Koi. I thought Fu will make it to the tower but we never thought we would have the Genjutsu mistress for a guest. Sakura answered, playing like the, represent of Naruto's mates. Well I hate to ruin her happy mood but long story short, Kurenai sensei's boyfriend just admitted that he hasn't taken into thought about how she thinks of his smoking habits and she had a real heartbreaker. Naruto said reluctantly and wasn't surprised to see a mix of sadness and angry in the girls' faces, especially Hinata's. Well enough of that all is past. Now, where will you like our guest to hang out or even sleep? There are two beds per room so if you will allow it, can Kurenai sensei to sleep in the room with us please? Hinata suggested while she and the other girls used a kinjutsu, forbidden technique, known as the, puppy eyes technique, no man ever wins over it. I was hoping to do so in the first place. That was what Naruto answered and the five girls practically crushed him in hugs and kisses. Kurenai smiled that she saw her adoptive daughter happy with her love. Kurenai hoped to learn how is that a 13-year-old managed to keep so many girls happy. She hoped that Asuma was that romantic and thoughtful of her own well-being. 
Kurinai decided to worry about it all in the morning so she went to bed next to Naruto and his mates. Kurinai hoped to learn how is that a 13 year old managed to keep so many girls happy. She hoped that Asuma was that romantic and thoughtful of her own well being. Kurinai decided to worry about it all in the morning so she went to bed next to Naruto and his mates. Morning came when the first light and it tried to enter the room in the tower within training ground 42, where Kurinai was trying to sleep in. She huffed and placed her pillow over her head until she smelled something good as the scent wandered into the room. It was too much and she finally sat up from the covers and turned to see that the bed where Naruto and his girls were sleeping in was empty. She was still groggy from waking up from the warm sheets and soft pillow that she couldn't make out her surroundings until the door opened, her jaunan instincts took in and she dove back into the covers to hide herself. But when she looked from them, it was Naruto with a tray of breakfast. Good morning Kurinai sensei, Naruto said cheerfully as he walked towards the nightstand and placed the food on there. Remember, don't eat too fast, it always ruins your stomach and the taste. Kurinai could see that Naruto was like a kid on Sugar Rush, maybe from the fun he had last night. Here is a joke to start a day Naru-kun, Kurinai said and Naruto managed to stay still to listen. If I was only 10 years younger and still a Jonin, I would ask to be your mate. Naruto's eyes widen, not because of the joke but an adult is willing to be such. Kurinai smiled at the blonde's shock, you forget that I sometimes bath Hinata because I am a woman and she does see me as a mother. You just didn't think that I would notice the cute fox pattern on Hinata's neck connecting to her left shoulder. At first it was a little feisty but the next minute, it seemed to notice that I was trustworthy enough to be allowed to bath your mate for now on. You did impressive work. Naruto blushed at the praise, well, I just wanted to go slowly like any mother would like for their daughters until Aero Gigi set up that stupid requirement for Genin teams. I was just a step from strangling him like you remember. Kurinai giggled at the found memory of nearly murdering her leader for being a pervert for the last time. Kurinai realized that while she was talking and laughing the morning away, she had finished her breakfast, it was delicious. She used a napkin to whip her mouth, thanks for the meal. Who made it? It was me Kurinai sensei. I learned to cook to make food other than ramen for me to eat for now on. Now the female Jonin was really impressed, in this world. Women love a man who can could cook when they don't feel like having takeout on their dates. Try it out lonely boys. Closing parenthesis. Four days sure did come and flew away, now it is the day for the third exam to start. There was just one problem with the participants. It may be an inconvenience or could endanger them in the far field. Naruto was standing in the gym within the tower with his team. Sasuke woke up a couple of hours ago which was barely enough time to get his body working clockwork again. The same came for Kiba except that Kurinai tried to pervert him from trying ask Hinata out and even Akamaru bidden him so he would stay still and stay quiet. Basically, the arrogant jerks that were put to a four day sleep had wakened up with have their strength for sleeping so long in a row. Hiruzen then appeared in front of the crowd including the genin who just came out of the forest a few hours earlier. With him were Ibiki and Anko and more of the Jonin from the Force. Welcome to the Hokage Tower in the Forest of Death. Now we will begin the preliminaries. What? This was the general reaction from the Jonin. But we just got out of the woods. The group with the musical note on their headbands were enraged that a bunch of greenhorns beat them to the tower and completed the second exam before them. They had to face other teams and animals to get their scrolls and get to the tower. Nevertheless, we Excuse me Hokage-sama, everyone including Hiruzen turned to see what looked like a zombie, a jonin with a pale face and baggy eyes and he has been coughing ever since he first arrived. Allow me to cough take over. This guy needs to lie down. Everyone including the fellow jonin and the Hokage thought. The latter sighed, very well Hayate, I will leave everything to you. The man named Hayate walked out, thus giving the jonin a better look at him. He wore the standard Jonin style of dress complete with a forehead protector acting like a bandana, a flak jacket and regular sandals. His hair was brown with black lines under his eyes which somehow mixed with his coughing perfectly. My name is Kof Hayate Gecko and I will cough be the proctor for the cough exams. Hayate introduced himself, now cough, since they was more teams cough left from the exams at the cough start and still two cough many left over at cough this moment. If we have the cough third exam now, 
it will take too cough long for it to be completed. Some Genin looked towards Sasuke as if to blame him for this predicament with his loose mouth. The cough preliminaries will cut cough the number of Genin by cough half so the problem would be solved. That made sense to the Genin. In order to decide who is cough fighting who, we have set up a system. Hayate pointed towards the wall behind them and a monitor was lowered in. That will cough randomly choose the fighters. Once the first cough pair is decided, everyone else will go to the cough catwalk to wait until their fight. The suspense was terrible and tick in the air as the genin silently took a gulp in their throats. Finally the board ceased its spinning to reveal two names. Sasuke Uchiha vs Yoro Ikado. Best always first, Sasuke arrogantly thought. This soon ha, huh? Yoroi was a clothed figure with the Konoha headband as a bandana covering his head with a cloth covering his mouth. He also had the standard genin style clothing with the color black. He also wore thick glasses that prevent everyone from knowing his eye color. I am going to skip the fight since it is easy to find it on YouTube or Naruto Wiki. Just look it up. Shosha. Sasuke Uchiha. Hayate announced as the Uchiha went back to his team. Let's see you do better Dobi. Sasuke said in his usual tone of indifference and cockiness. As for Naruto, he didn't finch and neither did Sakura who was dozing off on his shoulder. Everyone else was looking at the board as it spins until it stopped. Fu vs Shino Abarame. This could be fun, Fu thought. Quote dot 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 quote. The stoic Abarame who covers themselves in cloaks was as silent as ever. What a perfect pairing for those two. Naruto said which confused everyone except for Naruto's girls yet they knew enough not to spill the beans. Ready. Fu gave the. Okay. While Shino just nodded. Then Hajime. The fighters just stood there facing each other, not moving at all. To any real ninja, they are observing each other to see any openings to strike. They are hoping the other will act first so they can land the first strike. Somehow a leaf floats into the arena which the two insect users see as the call to strike. Shino launched himself with taijutsu when Fu merely shrugged it off and then threw a left hooker that Shino just barely dodged since the floor that was hit cracked under the sheer force. Fu then noticed that the nick she placed on her opponent began to spill bugs. So that is the Aburame style insect for battle huh? I am surprised you are not shocked or disgusted by their appearance. Shino spoke his thoughts. Where I live, the climate draws in insects of various types so they never bother me. On the contrary, they seem to see me as their queen. Fu said in a decoded message for the, real, ninjas to figure out. Naruto's girls all thought the same thing. Fu is a Jinchuriki like their maid in Gara. Back to the fight, Sweden. Subin. Water emerged into Fu's hands as it molded into whips that Fu started to throw at Shino who tried to use his arm to block but he first whip quickly scattered them long enough for the other whips hit Shino in many part of his body, the impact launched him into the wall behind him. Fu waited patiently for Shino to try and unpry himself from the wall which he did. That was a Sweden wasn't it? Shino said stoically. I was waiting for something like another Sweden or a Doden but nothing came, you clan heirs don't like to expand don't you? Fu said remembering the lessons on Futon, Sweden and Doden that Naruto taught her. Anyway, I wonder why you aren't noticing them. Shino said as the wounds were acting insects coming out, you like my friends. They are called Kikaichu. They love to eat away the chakra belonging to the enemy of their hives. Which, in other words, are you, right? Fu wasn't even confused at Shino's choice of words. Yes. Fu was now on offense when she heard a clicking sound behind her, she turned around to see a horde of these kikaichu behind her. It meant that Shino had placed his opponent in a corner, either she can attack him and get consumed by the horde or attack the horde only to be attacked by Shino. It works on a regular shinobi but Fu was not. Doden. Doroku Geishi. Fu channel her chakra to both her front and back to cause the ground to rise into the direction away from Fu. This caused Shino and his horde to lose their balance. Sweden. Mashimazu Yak. Water began to surround Fu while shaping into her figure but not a second later, it dislocated from Fu and reformed again facing the opposite direction, almost like clone made of water that has enough chakra for a normal ninja. Fu still wasn't done, Futon. Daitapa. Fu and her water double all preformed the hand seals and took in a breath air to send it back with great force, thus hitting both Shino and his insects. When the dust cleared, 
The Shino in front of Fu scattered into insects while the real deal appeared, still damaged, out of the insect horde behind her. You are strong. Even hit both me and my double. I will die before seeing that you become a chunin. Shino said painfully before succumbing to his wounds. Hayate appeared next to Fu, Shosha, Fu Uzumaki. The crowd was silent after hearing about the Uzumaki, heart but still cheered because of the Kunoichi's powerful play. All right Fu Chan, you were badass. Naruto cheered for his mate like the rest of the girls. Interesting that she knows Sweden, Doden, and Futon. Troublesome, Shikamaru muttered to himself. I munch don't know about munch that Shikamaru but I won't munch want her as an opponent. Choji said worryingly but who can tell because he is eating away like a pig. She clearly munch seen Shino's insects before so she must munch fight with them too, maybe she uses the munch same as Shino. Even though Choji is big boned, he had hanged out with Shikamaru long enough to pick up some pointers in the act of observation. So what? Fate always helped me win no matter who the opponent. Neji said arrogantly by was ignored by his teammate and teacher who were just yelling at, flames of youth. If Hanada-chan was any better, I will just take both her and that bug nerd bitch for myself too. I am alpha so I am allowed the many girls I want. Kiba looked at Fu with lust without knowing that she is taken too, he just didn't notice that she was covered in Naruto's scent yet Akamaru sure did, he tried to tell Kiba not. But his partner just won't listen, just think about his dirty fantasies. Akamaru was now thinking about hanging out with Naruto instead. You weren't kidding that the Fu girl is around your level Gara Nisan. Tamari spoke. Abarame were feared for their logic and insects and yet Fu managed to outwit him perfectly. Tamari was getting worried when her youngest brother told her never to underestimate Naruto or anyone associated with him, primary his mates. Everyone thoughts were interrupted with the board started spinning. Then it stopped saying. Ino Yamanaka vs Sakura Haruno. Naruto smiled before turning to said girls and got their attention, now just remember, the audience wants a good show, don't sell yourself as a whole and no missing limbs. It has to be clean. The two Kunoichi nodded before jumping to the battling area, Hayate was already there. Are both contestants ready? They all nodded before he flicked his arm, Hajime. Ino took the first move and launched three kanai at Sakura who expertly dodged and went in with a right hook filled with chakra. Ino balanced it with a left stab kick with the same amount of chakra and muscle strength. The impact caused a wind force strong enough to make the audience fell a pressing sensation. The two girls then jumped from each other and then engaged in an intense taijutsu brawl with every kick, every punch, and every open palm press blocked or cancelled out, the ground below their feet already began to crack. Kakashi was observing the two girls go out on each other. His experience told him that this wasn't a fight to get to the finals, it was to pull on a good fight and see where their skills are in order to improve them. He admitted that was what he expects in a real kunoichi, rather than to some helpless fangirls. The boys were a mix of confusion, shock and a touch of lust, the latter belonged to Sasuke and Kiba who imagined how it will be like to have such powerful and sexy women under their thumb. As for the former two, they were wondering if the two biggest fangirls had become real kunoichi, one thing was for sure is that none of them is going to start complaining anytime soon. Back at the catfight, Ino and Sakura realized that they were only going to tire themselves out from taijutsu alone, one thing they learned from Naruto was to notice this. So they started to change gears from Titan in. Sakura was always the fastest in this area compared to how Ino was the fastest, out of the bunch, in Taijutsu. Raiden. Habana no Guro. Lightning was needed in Sakura's mouth until she spit them out at a fast pace at Ino. Knowing that an attempt to dodge will be pointless, Ino formed hand seals and shouted, Futon, Kazihaim Baria. A strong wind came in front of Ino and formed a shield of a regal design that successfully protected Ino from the lightning sparks. Sweden. Ms. Wankashindo, Ino shot an actual anchor, cheesy isn't it? Made of water at Sakura at great force, the only way out was to defend as Ino did. Doden. Doryuheiki. Sakura vomited mud into an open circle in front of her that causes a wall of earth to shoot out and take in the Sweden perfectly. Kaden. Natsu Eria, fire style, summer area. 5. Sakura spoke in a tone that only Naruto was able to catch and it saddened him. Before the matches started, 
he and the girls agreed that Ino should give a good match before quitting because her clan name will be a bad giveaway. Everyone was just focusing on how the fighting area was filled with fog that was lanced with chakra so no one was able to see where the two girls were. Inside the area itself, Ino was too having trouble finding Sakura whom was at home since she was the creator of the fog, she can see everyone in it clearly. Ino was just worried that Sakura still remembers the plan. Then she heard birds crying coming from her back but moved to slow when a woman's hand covered in the chirping lightning placed itself on Ino's shoulder and stunned her with the harmless lightning, Ino just smiled that her friend for real was going to prove her worth. When the fog cleared, Sakura appeared but the chirping lightning was cancelled before anyone seen it. In the fog, the bird crying sound was muffed by the chakra in the air so that no one will realize that a civilian girl had copied one of Kakashi's techniques. Hayate went down to check Ino and while surprised that the girl was lying while smiling but ignored it to say the verdict. Shosha by knockout, Sakura Haruno. The civilians cheered that one of their own that actually became a ninja had triumphed over an heiress to a shinobi clan. Naruto replied a short but with many meaning message to the Hokage and Kakashi letting them know about the plan, they both smiled at how Naruto can go through a plan was surely causing him pain. Hiruzen himself was considering of making Ino a chunin anyway by impressing everyone with the performance anyway, he was worried that the civilian council was ruining the academy with their rule. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next part.